So, hey guys welcome back to my channel. This is part 1 of, what if Naruto returns after 10 years of banishment with Karen, Tayuya. In this fanfic, we will see powerful and naughty versions of Naruto. But don't forget to check out the description box, please do support the original author. Now, let's start the story. Chapter 1. Return after 10 years of banishment. Location. Fire Nation, Forest. The Hona Team 10 finds themselves waking up in a forest, a campsite, and Shikamaru jolts up from his sitting position, glancing around warily unable to recall how they got there. A slight panic set upon him yet as he checked his surroundings to find traps and the like set up to protect the group. Moving toward the two tents, he woke up his teammates who, like him, panicked upon realizing they had no idea where they were. Ino spotted a map with a kunai sticking in it and quickly moved to inspect it, hey, over here. And her team moved to her. It took them moments, if the map was accurate, to figure out that they were only half a day from home Eno, how's your arm? Joji asked and that's when they all realized their injuries had vanished, now that you mention it Eno responds looking down at where a sword had sliced open her arm, not even a scar that, suddenly the group was surrounded by a group of Anbu Black Ops. Team 10 was on guard, back to back, weapons drawn and defenses up identify yourselves. The monotone voice from one masked ninja Chunin Yamanaka Eno. Eno answers without questions, Chunin Akamich Choji. Choji responds Jonin Nara Shikamaru, ID number Shikamaru states giving their ID numbers which the man nods, come with us. The team escorted the trio back toward the village. Upon their return, confusion was written all over their faces as, despite the early sunrise they could clearly see a crowd at the gates. A closer inspection showed all their parents, friends and even the Hokage herself as a welcoming party, what's with the? Shikamaru was tackled by his mother, fussing over him with a great deal of concern as was the parents of her teammates, which added further confusion on the trio. It's good to have you back. We were worried that you had run into trouble. Tsunade Senju explained stepping forward through the crowd, thank you Hokage-sama. The three chorus but it was clear to see that they were confused, it seems you're confused about something. She asked and Shikamaru spoke for the three s, well you see, he glanced at his friends and comrades, why is everyone out here? It was just a routine patrol. Silence reigned. Tsunade looked between them before raising an eyebrow yes. You left on a patrol near Water Country almost four months ago. More silence. What? Eno squalls. Anoha, General Hospital. A week later. Nothing out of the ordinary. Tsunade sits on a chair before her three shinobi, looking over numerous tests and graphs from the prior week. In your report she continued, you stated that you, Eno, took a sword strike to your arm, looking at the platinum blonde who nodded promptly, the san and then looked to Shikamaru and you had a gash across your back. Nara nodded as her focus then turned to Choji and your arm was broken in two places, with a fractured hand. Choji nodded in agreement yet the slug princess looks back down at the charts, all these supposed wounds have been perfectly healed, bones reset, and scarring removed. Letting out a tired sigh yet, none of you remember anything after your fight till you woke in that camp the Anbu found you in. All three nodded in agreement, but Tsunade saw the contemplative look on Eno's face, as if she was withholding something Eno. The ponytailed blonde snapped to her leader um there is something that's been kind of bugging me. She half fumbles her words, still clearly distracted by whatever it is oh. The senju raises an eyebrow at her kinda-like, a heavy sigh passes her lips, it feels like when you see something out the corner of your eye, but when you look, it's gone. Then when you see something again, it vanishes but it's like a memory or something. I've been working with my dad, but even he hasn't seen something like this before. That's not all, Hokage-sama. Shikamaru spoke up next drawing the leader's attention, though normally I would feel rather disturbed about having such a massive blank in my memories, for some reason when we focus on it. I feel safe and happy but don't know why. Choji adds with a shrug, confusing their cage further. The older woman pinches her nasal as this was just getting weirder and weirder, but figured she asked the last question, okay keep working with Anoichi, all three of you, but before that, she pulls out a small piece of card that held a white cloud. An orange sun peeking above it, does this seem familiar to any of you? But they didn't need to answer as all three just smiled at it no, but for some reason it seems friendly. Ino questioned furring her brow at that sensation with the other two nodding in agreement. Another long heavy sigh from the blonde hokage who sags in her seat, head hanging back troublesome. She whispered causing a snort from the Nara. Anoha, cage tower. Heard your brats were found alive. Jiryu the toad sage and former teammate of the slug san and turned hokage, speaks as he steps in through the window ya, with no memories of what transpired in their absence. She mutters not even breaking stride in her signing of her, and all cage's worst nightmare turned reality, paperwork. Curious. The giant white-haired man murmurs as he caresses his chin, did your network pick up on anything? She asks placing down another scroll, seamlessly moving to the next, only hearsay and whispers. Apparently the Akatsuki had some kind of breaking up. 
This news caused the Hokage to freeze for a moment before looking up at her oldest friend who was grinning seriously. He nodded vigorously confirmed it on the way back. Apparently, several of the members turned on their leader. No clue what happened after that though. So, does that mean? She asks as hope begins to swell within her, and he nods, if he's still alive, he's safe from them now. His voice softening significantly as he spoke and her whole form seemed to lighten up at that, a smile grew upon her face, then then perhaps we can bring him home. How do you? But the threat gone, the council has no leg to stand on, and we can lift the banishment. She declares pushing aside her paperwork carefully not to disturb it, I don't think. Shizun. The last Senju roared, and her first apprentice pokes her head in summon a council meeting. I want them assembled now. The girl vanishes back behind the door without a word, as Tsunade was visibly beaming at the thought of her knuckle-headed son brother returning to her arms. Oh god, he's going to be so big now. What is he like 22 now? 23, yes. Jurea states a lot less enthusiastic about the whole ordeal, yet Tsunade was so happy that she didn't notice Tsunade. He almost whispered and she settled down at that, he never used her name like that unless it was important. His solemn look was more than telling though Jureya. Do you really think he'll come back? Willingly at that. He asked in an uncharacteristically serious tone which actually gave her a pause at that. In her excitement, she had forgotten that part of the reason for his banishment was due to her negligence and her duties. If she hadn't gotten so drunk after all the members of the retrieval team made it out of the danger zones, the traitor included, she just had to celebrate a job well done a bit too hard. A lump formed in her throat at that and her mood soured significantly, you're right, Jurea. He thinks we turned our backs on him back then. That I turned my back on him. Her voice almost a whisper yet, I can't back down until I at least try and convince him that it was all a misunderstanding. That we miss him. That I miss him. We need him here, where he belongs. She declared resolutely causing him to sigh at that, not sure how this will play out, I hope you're right about this, Suheim. It's been a decade since he left. Assuming he's still alive, he's no doubt changed quite a bit. He may not be so forgiving. Anoha, Council Chambers. Ten minutes later. Why did you call a meeting Sunade Sama? Elder Yudatane questioned as Tsunade, flanked by her former teammate, asks as she takes her seat, remember your place, Elder. She growled with a sideways glare, or you'll join your old friend in hell. The man visibly shuddered at remembering how Danzo Shimura and his root operatives were smashed and hunted down ruthlessly by her Anbu. Now then she clears her throat I have received word that one of our biggest threats has been dealt a crippling blow and has since disbanded. Her opening was met with the room's full attention at the Akatsuki is no more. Who destroyed them? Shikaku questioned, his laziness completely forgotten with that opening statement. This time it was the Toad Sage who stepped up to explain according to my intel, it was a two-pronged attack. From within and from the outside. Effectors? Hiashi Hayuga questioned to which the sage just nodded with a grim look upon his face, what's to stop them from reforming? Asked Hana Inazuka, taking the place of her mother who had stepped down a few months ago, it seems only their leader was aware of the full plan. When he killed the other surviving members, all went their separate ways. It wasn't a quiet affair however he explained as the others could put two and two together, then, if that is all. Sasuke inquired about getting ready to stand. That isn't all, it's a the Senju growled, causing the young man to retake his seat, in light of the news presented, I would like to push a motion to repeal the banishment of one Uzumaki Naruto, and offer him back his rank and status as a Konoha Shinobi. Silence dawned on the word sunk in. The various clan heads shared looks of confusion, then realization before contemplation, but no one wanted to speak their minds, as this was a paper bomb of a suggestion, and no one felt like lighting this note. An unspoken game of chicken was being played as the Hokage began to grow impatient at the lack of response, but just as she was about to explode, one civilian counselor spoke up but, why do we need that demon back in the V, his throat was cut clean through, and the Anbu vanished within the next second, body and toe, this is a shinobi matter, you civilians should remember your place. The Senju snarled, the six civilians sinking back into their seats, not wanting to gain her ire well. She looks across the shinobi clan heads for a response which came from the quietest of the group, if memory serves me right Shibi Abreem speaking up, it was a 10-year banishment, no. If that is the case, then it should have ended several months ago. Sun's jaw dropped before clicking her fingers, and a silver-haired Anbu dropped before her, kneeling, fetch me those documents. No need. They respond by handing them to her causing a raised eyebrow before said Anbu returned to their post, and she reads over the document carefully, and there it was, a clause in small print stating that very fact, but only if the threat has been dealt with. She smirks as logical as ever Shibi. Thank you for pointing that out. Then turning to the group, I want several teams of trackers out looking for him. Hana, Hiashi, Shibi, can I count on you? 
All three nodded as Jiria stepped up again, I already set my network to look for any clues about his whereabouts. I should have something for the weekend. Check back with me then. The three nodded again dismissed. Tsunade ordered. The Noha, General Hospital, Psychological Ward. Are you sure it LL work, Oni? Yeah. The other two will work with the standard seals, but she's a Yamanaka. Their mental defenses are far higher than average shinobi. That's why I'm modifying the seal specifically for her Amaru. Hey Nar going for a drink, you coming? Give me a moment with this. You shouldn't smoke in here. Relax I've almost finished. Careful Nissan, I just closed those wounds. Haha sorry almost. It just cut off there. Inoichi says, opening his eyes as his daughter panted heavily at the excursion of effort, so someone did save us she panted, and he nodded, seems you were sedated during their discussion, but you weren't fully under yet. He says thinking aloud, he said something about a seal. Did they lock away our memories of them? No. They did something else. Inoichi mumbles completely perplexed at the situation, if there was a seal, we would have found it during your week-long checkup. No mental sealing either or we both would have found it by now. It's like you literally had no memories at all. I've never seen anything like this. Great. Back to square one. Eno sighs exasperatedly no, not quite. We got a name. Two names, actually. Amaru and Nar. I'll check them both out, see if we can't find something on either. The head of T and I stood up from the mat that we're both sitting on thanks daddy. I think I'll get some sleep. I'm tired. He nodded, sleep well princess. As he steps outside a room. As he walks down the corridor, he is joined by Jureya who fell into step with the blonde does Amaru Nar ring a bell. As they turn a corner to which the San in turn following after the head interrogator, it does actually. He mumbles barely coherently as his travel companion looks to him somewhat shocked, not that he showed it, I need to check first though. I'll keep you informed. Before vanishing suddenly and quietly causing a raised eyebrow as there should be no way for a shunshun to work within the ward, thanks to seals the man himself had placed. Inoichi sighed, of course he can bypass them before resuming his rounds. Anoha, Hokage's office. Ah, here it is. Tsunade says as Shizun hands her a file from a mission to which a three-man team of Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata, escorting a doctor and his apprentice back home. It was a C-rank turned S-rank. It was linked into the aerial attack on Kanoha. Ah yes stopping skimming the report as she came upon a name, Amaru was the apprentice's name. Yes, I recall that mission. I was sent as backup and caught them both. Guess we found the medic. Jureya thoughtfully said, if she is, then I want her as an apprentice. Her work's on par with Sakura's. Tsunade praises proudly then, Nar could be short for Naruto, right? Shizun chimes into which Jiraiya just nods in agreement, more than likely. If they were running from pursuit Tsunade pulled out a map, laying upon her desk so if we start from their mission location, pointing to a port town upon the border in the land of Noodles, their report states that they were discovered approaching and shadowed here, pointing to a point just beyond the town and ambushed here, moving further away from town the next morning. They then ran this way toward home, she places a pretty large circle around here then. Jureya nodded along, I'll contact my sources within Water County. See if anything happened in the last few months of note around that town. I'll send a few tracker teams to the area. Tsunade adds with a nod, I'll send an Anbu team along with them, in case you run into any trouble. Jureya nods in agreement I'll head out immediately. Land of Noodles, Southern Port Town. Hinoha's former teammate of Hinata Hayuga, Inuzuka Kiba and Abram Shino, approached the small town, but did not enter it. Shino had his bugs on lookout as Hinata used her bloodline, the Byakugan, to scan the town for any signs of shinobi activity. She idly noticed the three other tracking teams, identical makeup of her own, all nearby doing the same as they were but at the other cardinal directions, even the one out on the ocean. Looking around she didn't find anything out of the ordinary, until she found a single person with a highly developed chakra network, but was being suppressed, heavily but professionally. On closer inspection she noted that they had an identifying mark that all teams had been given to all teams, a white cloud with a yellow sun peeking over the top, found someone. They're in a bar, having a drink at a table. In that case, we should move in with another of the teams backing us up. Shino says as he sends out several messengers to his clansmen and the other teams, but suspected they too had already detected the same as them. Teammate moved in and were joined by two of the four teams who remained outside the town in response. Within the tavern the leaf shinobi noticed the sly looks within the shadows in the dimly lit room, a quick pulse of her bloodline showed the women in the corner talking casually with a civilian rather animatedly. Moments later however said woman stiffened and turned to the new arrivals, and a flicker of anger flashed before it turned to annoyance. Her companion too looked more than a little annoyed at the arrival of the leaf shinobi, damn leaf strolling around like they own goddamn place. The dark-haired woman growled as the civilian nodded in agreement, they weren't the only ones who thought that I'm sorry to intrude upon you today, however we have some questions for you. 
Anada asked softly but firmly which caused a raised eyebrow oh. Little Almi. To which the leaf roll nodded as the lady drops her elbow to the table, supporting her head in hand while still sipping the ale, that insignia upon your arm Hinata, pointing to the cloud emblem on her upper arm, what of it? The woman growls with a very noticeable edge to her voice, the air in the tavern growing unbearably heavy with both Shino and Kiba, noticing the tensing of multiple patrons. The ambient chatter died out, and all eyes turned to the leaf shinobi that were standing in the middle of the room, can we not move somewhere more private? A snort was the response, what do you want, leaf shinobi? The venom in that question was not missed by anyone, years of training allowed Hinata to mask the flinch, one of teams were rescued by. And? The civilian speaking up with a glare, they've saved us more times than any of you hidden villages. If you have a problem with her numerous civilians all standing, several mercenaries moving into defensive positions, no no need to be aggressive Hinata, not even batting an eye at the implied threat that's surrounding them all, we just wanted to make contact, perhaps we can. No need. The girl waving off the offer immediately, almost instinctively, we don't want anything from you people. And why is that? Hinata presses causing the glare to become damn near murderous leave. Now. TSK. We came only to thank you people, why so? Kiba was silenced by a smothering killing intent from the woman, we won't ask a second time. Almost a whisper as the mercenaries all beginning to flare their chakra, surprising the ninja very well. Hinata bowing have a good day. She says leading her team back out. That night the girl who had been spotted by Team 10 was walking through the town, her friends in tow when suddenly a group of Anbu drop in reaching for her, only to be hit by a paralyzing pulse of a ceiling jutsu. All four froze in place, mid-lunge as expected of the hidden leaf the girl chuckles glancing at each mask, should have tried harder, Toad Sage. Looking into the alleyway oh. You knew I was here. The white-haired man stepping out of shadow with a hardened gaze of course. We've had our eyes on you since the inception of our group. Staying out of your sight became easy once we noticed the patterns to look for. She chuckles causing a soft frown to appear on the man's visage oh. And she nods before smirking, we are well aware of your intention, predicted it, and planned a feral grin as multiple nondescript shinobi appear all around the chief spy master. Anoha, Hokage's office. Three days later. The puff of smoke alerted Tsune to Jiraiya's presence, beaten and battered on the floor barely conscious or aware of his surroundings, Jiraiya. She yells jumping over her desk and switching to medic mode, what happened? BJ Su made it. He pants clearly delirious before passing out. Within moments she had him stabilized enough to move him to the hospital where he would remain for two weeks. Back in her office, after that scare, Sunaid looks at the map she had found crumpled in her teammate's grip. It had several points, but one of the crosses had been circled to which was an unclaimed territory. Sighing she began to write out a mission request for an investigation mission. Shady bar out near nowhere. The pool cue smashes a colored into the corner pocket, settling nicely up for the next shot. The shooter, a young woman with waist-length black hair paired with a slender figure she twirls around the wooden pole in hand while smiling at her man, winner buys drinks. You sure you want to play this again? I've beaten you three times in a row. A blonde-haired man responds as she twists into him, his arms wrapping around her in a way that showed their intimate relationship, I got a good feeling about the this one, as she takes a sip from his beer mug, besides the loser cooks tonight. Then you better not lose. Your cooking sucks. She playfully punches his shoulder before planting a Chaz kiss and moving back to the table. The blonde reigniting his cigarette as he leans back against the table, grabbing his glass from the table and downing it before signaling for another to be brought over to the barkeep. The girl sensually leans forward to line her shot, giving her partner a very good view of her shapely figure. The sound of two clicks indicates to the blonde that his girl had missed, and a smirk danced across his lips as they curled up slightly, perhaps if you had focused on actually, her sudden application of pressure of lips with her own just play, Nehru. The whisper but the grin never left his face as he placed his death stick back in his mouth, as he takes his cue and lines up. One shit turns to three, three to five, and games end in the blonde's favor. He smirks while spreading his arms out, smoke stick balancing between his lips, as I said. The one. A voice from the darkness calls out, the captain, obviously. Another answers as a few chuckles echo through the bar, shut your traps. The raven girl snaps and silence rules, lighten up, kin. After that last job, we made out like bandits. I get that but. You just want to get home, right? To which she nods to his question, and he smiles while bringing her into a hug, arg they're all ovi dovi. Gonna be sick. Wanna try that again, Larn? Naruto growls and said man tried to ignore his existence. Naruto leads his partner to an open chair, and she sits atop his lap, and the two become lost within their own convocation. 
pin, a game, a light samurai asks. Her left is armored in traditional plates, but the rest was leather and cloth with her katana on her waist sure. Kin getting up from her seat upon Naruto's lap. You still sore about that one who got past your guard Bella? The girl growls at the reminder. I've doubled my training. I will not let myself stagnant. Now, prepare yourself. The game progressed under Naruto's watch when suddenly the ambient chatter fell drastically, drawing the attention to the door where a pair of shinobi stand, observing the large bar. A snort is heard leaf shinobi, you aren't welcome here. The barmaiden informs them sorry, but we need a moment with. You better watch it their kiddos a shinobi without a headband step forward to address them, we aren't your friends here. Yet one of the leaf shinobi snaps towards the pool table, as if peering through the darkness, smoke, and grime Naruto. The whole bar snapped up, defensive positions taken, what are you doing here, Hayuga? The voice of one Naruto Uzumaki cutting through the darkness that engulfed his figure. The coldness in the tone sent shudders through the leaf nin spines, causing said girl to retreat into herself so one of her colleagues steps forward in her place, oh I dead last. Swords were drawn immediately when the Inazuka yelled that watch your tongue mutt. The Nanuzka standing on the opposite side growled his partner at his side following suit that actually took the young heir by surprise, a missing nin of his clan standing up for someone they were sent to collect here he muttered enough. Naruto's voice echoed through the room, stepping into the one of the few scattered lamps revealing his tall six-foot-one figure, built well but lean with a mesh shirt beneath a dark blue jacket, paired with black cargo trousers and boots. Now tell me, he says breathing out a puff of smoke as he rests against the pool table, arms crossed, staring at them with a perfect face of indifference. The throat cleared and the silver-haired jonin of the trio stepped towards his former student Neru. What are you doing here? Final warning. The sun-kissed blonde spoke with finality, no fondness or kindness in his eyes just cold hard steel. A brief moment of silence followed before the man stepped forward, by the order of the fifth Hokage, Tsunade Senju, you, Naruto Uzumaki, are hereby ordered to return to the village hidden in the leaves and report for active duty. The shinobi reported causing everyone to look at him incredulously. No one moved, not an inch, as the silence dragged on as Naruto himself just continued to puff on his smoke. As the last pieces of ash fell from it, a hand appeared next to him and presented an ashtray for him to dub it out before placing said object aside and stepping beside him. A slow chuckle escaped the blonde before the whole bar broke out in hysterical, side-splitting laughter that could be heard from miles around. It went on for so long that the leaf shinobi really felt out of place among the laughter. Several minutes passed before any semblance of normality returned to those within with Kin wiping away tears as she leaned back against Naruto's chest that that was a funny joke haha. -ha. They actually my sides a red head in the corner heaves, while the now drinking Naruto just sighed as he put his beer down before looking back at the intruders, wiping away a straight tear, oh my ain't that rich, coming from you Kakashi Haddock. Said Jonin presented an official document from his weapons pouch and tosses it to his former student only for another hand to puck it from the sky, opening it up and reading its contents, hey boss it's official and in writing. The girl proclaims flapping around the now open scroll, what is your answer? Bakashi stated firmly, his gaze not wavering as he stares at his sensei's son who takes the presented scroll and glances at it, so, my banishment was lifted. He received nods from the leaf shinobi as he holds Kin with his spare arm tighter, she reciprocates hugging his arm tighter to let him know she was with him on his decision. This action did not go unnoticed by one pale-eyed Hayuga who felt several emotions flooding her mind, non-positive and they want me back. Another nod was received why? The blonde asks with a raised eyebrow for. If you say for my own protection, your friends outside will not be safe. Naruto warned with a sharp edge, the surprise on the faces of the new arrivals was priceless, as the other patrons all smirk at that now, answer me Jonin of the Hidden Leaf, his icy blue eyes bore into the black eyes of the one-eyed man, it is your home. It is where your precious people live and where you belong. Multiple snorts echoed through the tavern as even the dogs within were clearly amused home, huh? Naruto hums grabbing another cigarette, placing the stick between his lips, but it was pulled away by the brunette in his arm. The sigh followed him, his eyes down at her with a soft growl, causing the girl to smile sinisterly, my home is right here, causing a blush on said Kanoichi beside, his eyes go from the warm ocean to an arctic desert, I haven't seen that cesspool in a decade. Forget it. Do you really think a betrayal could be forgiven so easily? Rai Zetsu, a former Anbu Kanoichi of the Hidden Grass, she had two Kadachi in hand at her sides, leave, Kakashi of the Sherigan. A red-head man stepping into view, his ripple like the jutsu piercing into the man's soul, forcing them to take a step back. As the Kanoha shinobi leave Naruto turns to his cousin Nagato, our job's done here. We should move out and head home. The Rinnegan user nods, agreed. We'll have to move up our schedule. All with the crowd whines, you heard him. Teayabello's vacation's over. Pack up camp and prepare to move. Yes, commander. 
The room responds, and immediately the bar clears out, the leaf shinobi watch from a distance, as they see the mass exodus of shinobi and samurai leaving the establishment, all of which bore the insignia of the white cloud somewhere on their persons. All cheery and friendly as they headed through the small town, which cheer and wave at the group as they pass. Bakashi also notes how most were in the bingo book he was holding, with most being of B rank or higher. Naruto steps out with Kin on his arm, Raizetsu talking with him rather animatedly, with a redeed fellow talking with a pair of samurai. Said man pauses for a moment, then looks directly at the copy ninja, several miles away and visibly sigh turning away and rejoining the retreating group. Rising dawn campsite. The group arrive back, partially inebriated but in high spirits as the guards welcome them back, the hidden leaf has sent its shinobi after the boss. Raizetsu explained to her guardsmen who all stiffen at that, so we're cutting the vacation short. Set a perimeter and prepare to move out before first light. Yes ma'am. They all chorus before vanishing in various shunshuns, and she sighs, this is troublesome. Nearby, trailing the group of mercenaries, a pineapple-haired shinobi sneezed as he leaps from branch to branch, you okay, Shika? His blonde friend asked to which he nodded, someone might be talking about me. Troublesome. The camp was reduced to only sleeping tents, with all the auxiliary facilities packed up into scrolls of various sizes, and multiple campfires blazed as the sunset. Naruto was sitting with Nagato discussing the plans for a small diplomatic mission that their spy network had suggested looking into. The former Akatsuki member found himself smiling as he gazed upon the dancing flames, you know, Naruto he began drawing the smoking blonde's attention, this was what the Akatsuki was originally meant to be, a force for good to protect those that couldn't afford it. I know. Naruto curt response, blowing out the smoke, then the leaf poked its head in and helped Hanzo root your forces and allowed Abito to manipulate your anger and hatred. A mirthless chuckle left the redhead's lips indeed. Looking to his blonde cousin, though you pulled me out of it and showed me the path I had forgotten so long ago. Naruto leaned forward on his knees and let out a sigh, flicking the bud into the flames, hatred and pain causes us to act irrationally. You just needed a helping hand. Looking to his second in command thanks to you, we have gathered so much support and offered me guidance. I could never thank you enough. His smile widening which was matched by Nagato we're Yuzumaki. Family above all. Even though my hair is blonde, Naruto jokes to which Nagato chuckles lightly, you may not have noticed by your roots have tints of red in them. Huh? You're going senile. Naruto laughs then sighs again. A moment of silence before he stands we should get to it then. We should. Nagato also standing looking to the white-haired Kinoichi and nods who nods back and the three of them all body flicker away. In the trees overlooking the camp from a distance the small company of leaf shinobi sit in waiting, hoping to catch Naruto and his party off guard and snatch him up before they could resist. It was an underhanded tactic, they didn't want to but were left with little choice. They needed Naruto back in the village, and the fifth Hokage gave them orders to ensure that outcome. Bakashi sighed silently looking back at the team with him, most of the Konoha 11, Naruto's old classmates were in attendance, hoping to use sentiment to guilt him back. The confrontation within the bar was unexpected, his student has changed in his decade away from the village, and now leading a group of missing ninjas and ronin. Glancing back to the camp he notices that both Naruto and the Redeed had vanished, but before he could voice it, the sensation of cold steel against his throat was unmistakable shit. Came from the dog nin known as Kiba which told Kakashi that he wasn't the only one held at blade point, we thought we told you to leave. The gruff voice of the Redeed he saw talking with Naruto, we have a mission to recover Naruto. I told you that ain't happening. Naruto responds from somewhere behind the silver-haired Jonin, come on, Naruto, man. We came all this ow. Silence mutt. A voice he didn't recognize, this will be your last warning, Haddock. The gruff voice states before everything went black for them. Naruto sighed at the sixteen knocked out leaf shinobi as he looked to his men who all nodded, we'll take them to the clearing, set the tags, so they'll wake after we leave. Yes sir. They all respond and take the fallen group to their camp, placing sealing tags upon their persons. So, they didn't leave huh? Tai announcing her presence no, they didn't. Naruto growled, what's the plan? She pressed tag em and leave them. Memory tags. Perhaps. Not really sure if they'll work or what they would remember. He says with a shrug. She chuckles at that, should be fun. Pulling out a pot of ink and empty paper. The next morning the leaf shinobi awoke in an empty clearing with foggy memories, unsure of why they were here, and not looking for the tavern described in the brief. Kakashi sitting up glances around to see all his people there and the panic subsided somewhat, what were we doing out here? Kiba questioned as his partner Akimaru groans and whines standing up Dunno. Shikamaru sighs before glancing around. All of them were so disoriented, they didn't notice the shadow clones in the trees who poofed out after confirming they had no knowledge of the night before. Chapter 2. Home. Hidden Rain Village. Also known as the village hidden in the rain. 
The group of mercenaries arrive back in the Land of Rain, the former stomping ground of the Akatsuki, and now the home of the Sunrise Organization. It didn't take long for the group to scatter and filter out towards their homes and reunite with their loved ones. Naruto led Kin and Raizetsu toward their penthouse in the city center alongside Nagato, all four were talking casually and animatedly with smiles upon their faces. Eerily what happened to the vacation. Conan, current leader of the Hidden Rain, was a brunette with a very soft face and amber eyes, a paper flower in her hair, we were confronted with a group of shinobi from the Hidden Leaf. Nagato explained, causing his childhood friend to frown, do you think this was due to our operatives confronting Jiraiya-sensei? Probably. Naruto offers as he passes the duo, heading back to his shared room, so we'll send out feelers, see what they are doing. Better safe than sorry. Nagato nodded, perhaps we should issue out headbands. No. Could cause more problems internationally. Let's talk to the daimyos. See if we could get a compromise ready. Conan thought diplomatically, to which Nagato nodded again, wise course of action. The Noha, Hokage office. A month had passed since the retrieval team left before they returned with a mission failure to which did not go down well. So, you found him. Tsunade asked to which they all looked at one another we don't know. We went to the target area, found the tavern, but then nothing. Kakashi reports which causes the cage to rub her temples, but noticed Ino's hesitation and narrowed her eyes. The rest of the report went through with growing frustration of the last senju. Upon the group leaving the office Tsunade calls out to Ino, stay behind Ino. I want a word. This caused a group-wide snapping of vision to the platinum blonde, who nervously returns to her place, yes master Tsunade. You know something, right? Speaking bluntly Tsunade narrows her eyes at her, and the mind walker sighs, I recall it all. They used a seal that makes things blurry, but I still remember it somewhat. And? We found him. Ino confirms causing the Hokage to smile brightly, which only made the next sentence sting so much harder, but he wants nothing to do with us. What? Tsunade jumps up why? We betrayed him. Ino says with another sigh, he's leader of the Rising Dawn from the sound of it. That organization of mercenaries. The very same. Ino confirms or at least very high up. She corrects, we need to bring him home. War is on the horizon. Tsunade mumbles hands gripping the seat rests with furrowed brows before glancing up at the Amanaka, any ideas? The paler blonde shrugs beside trying to seduce him back though with that girl who was hanging off what? Stopping herself upon the Senju's curious stare, seduce him back. Where did that come from? A small almost unnoticeable blush dusted her face well, um you see. Spill it Ino. Tsunade orders and the girl lets out a sigh, he said I was a looker and smart too. To think I actually had a shot is a bit. Oh? The Senju smirked with a teasing grin, causing a small shudder up her third apprentice's spine, how does he look now? He's a hunk, bad boy type with an ear-piercing, eight-pack and well-toned muscles. His whisker marks are still there but are faded, and he has red strands in his hair. I didn't get a close-up view, but from what Hinata mumbled in her sleep, the slight blush turned full on upon remembering the mutterings of the Hyuga heiress. A gentle smile forms upon the cage's face, seems he's grown up healthy and happy. He smokes and drinks a lot apparently. Ino comments offhandedly what? Yells the last senju. Hidden Rain Village. Naruto awakes to find Kin missing from the bed causing him to jerk up, but his senses detect her presence in the kitchen, and he calms his breathing. Getting up and going through his morning routine, he steps into the kitchen and is greeted with a heartwarming smile, morning cut short by her lips on his yule, the voice of a five-year-old Relanhin, more commonly known as Rella, from the table to which her two siblings laugh at the sight of mommy and daddy kissing behave, you three. Naruto chuckles lightly still holding his wife to his chest, said Kanachi resting against his chest happily, take a seat, and I'll get your food. She says reluctantly breaking away from his arms to which he simply heads to the table, ruffling the dark red hair of his eldest daughter Kashina as he sat beside her, how was your mission daddy? Said five-year-old asks and he smiles at her, the bad men were caught and sent for a timeout. Naruto reports causing the girl to beam up at him see. I told you that mom and daddy are the strongest. She declares to her young two siblings who both poke their tongues back, causing the child to growl at them, calm down, firecracker. Naruto running his fingers through her lush black hair with tinted red stripes that reminded him of both his mother and hers, as long as you believe in us, then that's all that matters. Speaking softly causing the young girl to blush at the praise and smile up at him, thanks daddy. Naruto offers a brighter smile and nods as he turns to the plate just placed before him, thank you for the food. Naruto enters the executive office of Conan, finding the other captains already waiting for him, your wife not joining us. Nagato arching an eyebrow from his seat on the coach, neither am I. Naruto offers back causing a chuckle to reverberate through the room so, what's on the agenda Lady of Aim? He continues as he takes his seat among the captains, and Conan ruffles dutifully through her pile of files, well, we have several requests, but I feel that this one is most urgent. 
pulling out a somewhat thin file and hands it to Naruto who promptly reads it, Land of Iron, huh? If Mifune is getting involved, then. Wave is currently a threat of being occupied by Rock, who are wary of what Mist would do should they proceed. There have been skirmishes already. Conan states as the six commanders ponder this information, all looking at their own packets, do we go to Waver the conference? AI opposes carefully, sitting back in her seat crossing her legs over one another, we have a deal with Wave, assets there too. States Naruto who looks to Nagato who nods Karen is still training their medical personnel. It's a vital trading hub for the southeastern region. Adds Conan too leaning forward on her arms, we don't have the forces spare if we go to the summit. Naruto sighs, we are committed to attend. Mifune is one we cannot fail to meet with. That will leave any forces we send to wave outnumbered by a very large margin. Larn states, as the pointed leader of the Ronin element of the group he was considered equal among the captains, they wouldn't have to hold out indefinitely just long enough for the meeting to be wrapped up, right? AI opposes to which Conan nodded, however Naruto chimes in if the stone know this, then this summit may be what they are waiting for, and will drag their heels. I will lead a team. Nagato announces drawing the eyes to him, I will lead a team there and hold out until you arrive with our main forces. Looking to Naruto then Taiya then Larn, I will place my fate in your hands this time. Risky but Naruto almost whispered, I'll send some shinobi along with them. Conan states pulling out a request form I'll cover the costs this time then. Naruto adds to which the bluenet nods and smiles then, aim shinobi, and the fourth group will head to wave, whilst we take the first through third to iron, and assist in security for the five cage summit. Naruto summaries and they all nod guess that's all we can do. He sighs, how long do we have? It's in a month. It'll take us two weeks to get there. Larn states and Naruto nods along, we'll leave in a week then. Give our people some R&R &R at least. They all nod, and both Taiya and Naruto both puff away revealing them to be shadow clones. Anoha, Hokage office. I'm in. Tsunade beckons as her assistant brings in the rookie 10, plus former senseis ah, good to see you all. As she gives Eno a look and said girl breaks rank and heads to the cage's side, much to the confusion of the group. After some investigations into your last mission, courtesy of Eno here, we have discovered what happened during the blank in your memories. The group's eyes widened slightly, and the attention was now completely focused, some of you may not be aware of this, but the Yamanaka clan's mental defenses are significantly higher than that of regular shinobi. Their clan techniques only heighten that to the point where memory retrieval and alterations are muted against them. The Hokage explains causing a few to nod, the others gawking at that information, due to this, Ino here, gesturing to said girl has, confirmed that you did indeed locate and confront Naruto Uzumaki and his group of mercenaries. The group nods again as she continues to explain, but was interrupted by Shikamaru Wait, if that's the case eyes flickering to his best friend, how come you don't remember the last time? From what we can only guess and summarize, the sealing done last time was performed by Naruto himself, who seemed to be aware of my clan's mental defenses, and compensated accordingly. Ino begins, the other theory is that whatever seal it was, was fundamentally different to the one used this time. As in? Kakashi questioned, as in she pauses trying to figure out how to explain it. A brief nod to herself she continued last time, I don't think it was us forgetting, so to speak. More like we don't remember. What's the difference? Kiba argues, everyone has short-term and long-term memories. Ino explains hesitantly, but upon seeing the nods and focus, presses on looking at the duration of our absence the first time round, I suspect that it wasn't us forgetting, but rather a seal that prevented us from remembering. We may have been conscious and walking around with them, but the seal prevented us from storing our short-term into the long-term. With me so far. They all nod this time, however, not only did someone inexperienced with my clan perform the sealing, but used a seal to make us forget allowing my mind to resist its effects, so that I can recall, although blurred, the events that led to the mass amnesia. So, we got lucky. Kiba questioned with a raised eyebrow to which the blonde nodded, do we have any information on their next moves then? Asuma asks with a raised eyebrow which caused both blonde Kinoichi to frown unfortunately we aren't that lucky so no. They were careless with the ceiling, but not what they discussed just that they were heading home. Tsunade explains causing the room to fall silent, each pondering over the information presented. The Hokage cough drawing the room's attention to her, the five cage summit is coming up, and as tensions are high, I will need a few escorts. I have decided to bring Kakashi, Guy, Kurinai and Ino. Ino? No offense, but she isn't exactly a combat type. Shikamaru inquires with a raised eyebrow, his childhood friend frowning at his dismissal, true, however, want Yamanaka with me, and as a trained Mednin, the two of us should be able to support the three fighters far more effectively, not to mention that her sensory abilities will be useful. The cage explains leaving out the fact that she was the only one to recall what the White Dawn forces looked like, or the secondary mission she was assigned to I see. 
Shikamaru responds as the cage turns to her sensei's son Asuma, you and Jiria will hold down the fort. She smiles, it'll be good to have a Sarada back in the seat. But all due respect the smoking Jonin begins to argue denied. I've made my choice. Tsunade cutting him off, his head dropping at that now. You have your orders. Dismissed. Land of Iron, Three Wolves Mountain Fortress. Greetings Commander Yuzumaki. Mifune states at the gates of his fort, shaking the blonde-haired former Leaf Shinobi's hand Lord Mifune. It's honor to be welcomed back. Naruto responds as the two shook firmly, I trust that your journey was calm and well. The man leading him in, the 300 White Dawn forces moving in behind, setting up in their pre-planned positions, yes. Naruto as he stands tall, his comrade noting his samurai-like right pauldron armor down to his right hand in a calm blue and as promised, we will provide additional security in these troubled days. The head samurai nodded his approval, you have worked wonders in the neutral countries, keeping the peace and ensuring safe passage to many. I foresee this event going much the same way. One can only hope. War is but a breath away. Naruto sighs not wanting to admit that their hard work seemed to be going to waste, do not fret. We are working toward a brighter tomorrow. You have given so much to that effect, I will not let you down this day. The samurai leader explains as Naruto pulls out a smoke, offering one to his companion who politely declines. After a long drag, reaching the second defensive line Naruto speaks up again, tell me, Lord Mifune, do you think we can get the rock to abandon their pursuit in wave country? It is a peaceful trading station. It may have a bridge to fire nation, but it holds no grudge against any beside maybe the leaf. The man nods at that I assume you refer to the rumors of their forces amassing. And on Naruto's slight nod he continued, I too wonder about that. Though, should they proceed, I will send my men to fight alongside yours to liberate them. No need. Naruto chiming up as they reach the main fort, I have the 4th regiment there. I hope, should the rock use this meeting as an excuse, that they can hold until we can reinforce them. Expecting trouble, commander? Always. Naruto's almost immediate response as he releases smoke from his lungs besides, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. You drilled that into me all those years back. Mifune smirks at that and yet, here you stand tall, proud, but filled with honor. I may have adapted a lot of your teachings, but I am no samurai, Mifune sensei. No you are not, you are an unpredictable shinobi samurai. I taught you well. A week later. The first delegation to arrive at the Five Cage Summit were the delegation from the Hidden Mist, Mei Terumi, the fifth Mizukage with her bodyguards of three of the reformed seven swordsmen. Upon reaching the first checkpoint she was delighted to see the famous, at least in water country, white dawn shinobi and samurai, mingling among the standard land of iron samurai. If any luck their commander was here too, meaning she could shoot her shot, much to the dismay of her companions. The second group to arrive was the Hidden Cloud, the fourth Reikage and his four guards which one included his brother B, considered the perfect Jinchurki. Many of the Land of Iron Samurai looked a little tense in the man's presence, but they all noticed how at ease, what he considered, a terrorist group like the White Dawn members were taking it in their stride, uncaring that he had brought a tailed beast vessel along with him. He would find out later that there were a number of Yuzumaki among the White Dawn which explained and caused a bit of hesitation on his part about bringing his brother along. Third was the Hidden Leaf contingent. Leading them was the last Senju, Tsunade Senju with Might Guy, Shuringen Kakashi, Jinjutsu Mistress Kurinai, and Flower Princess Ino. As they approached the gate the younger blonde pointed out several groups of White Dawn members who were now very wary of the young Yamanaka, they're pretty integrated into the samurai ranks. Kakashi noted as he watched the various shinobi all eyeing him carefully for any aggressive or subterfuge-like actions indeed. Their numbers are also somewhat surprising too. Kurinai offering her two cents to the convocation, I wonder if he is here. Tsunade thinking aloud as they are led into the fort perhaps. Kakashi offers naturally uncommittedly. The land of winds, hidden sand followed close behind the leaf group, no longer stanch allies, but neutral toward them at best. Ever since they exiled the blonde best friend of the Kazakiage, things between the two turned frosty at best, antagonistic at worse. Only though the actions of Tsunade things remained civil, though it was common knowledge that the sand held no love for the leaf, and the feeling was mutual. Upon seeing the familiar white cloud, Tamari couldn't help but smile, seemed security is well handled, Gara, Said boy noticing them too smiled slightly and nods at the group who all smile and nod back indeed. We were right to travel light. The last to arrive, as always, was the hidden stone with the fourth Tsuchikij Kamisari Kamizuru, wearing the hat and his bodyguards, which included the third's granddaughter Kutsuchi as his personal guard, Han was also present, which again caused much uncertainty among the land of iron samurai, but none from the terrorists' white dawn. Kamisari growled upon seeing that infernal cloud donning their armor plating, and vowed to dispose of the group. 
then he realized that his ploy has a greater chance of success, as judging by their numbers here, meant that they more than likely have no spare forces to defend against his forces takeover of that trait town. He smirks viscously at his triumph which caused many narrowed eyes from the white cloud forces. Land of Iron, Three Wolves Mountain Fortress Meeting Room. The five cage sit around a large table, their nation's flag at their backs with their cage hat set before them, their guards in bleachers high above their respective charges. Mifune sat proudly at its head, secure in the knowledge that one of his best students was at his back, should this meeting go badly. Clearing his throat Mifune opens the meeting eye, leader of this land of iron, welcome to this five cage summit. Who called us here, samurai? Kamisari growls out with his fist smashed almost through the table, my question is why? Isn't it obvious? Mayor retorts with a snort, you are actively trying to start a war with the neutral countries. I have no idea what you are talking of. Sure you don't Suchikich. Gara commented with barely veiled rage, we have seen your movements, our allies are moving to intercept that force you seem to have forgotten about. Oh? The grumpy man inquires surely you don't think any forces of mine are scared of your pitiful excuse for shinobi, young Kazakiage. Perhaps Gar muses interlacing his fingers upon the table shielding his mouth from view we don't have the numbers to confront you head on, a smirk plays upon his lips as he looks to the hidden rock leader however, clearly we are not alone in this endeavor. His gaze looking to the Mizukage who nods back at him, her gaze then turning to Mifun, waf your blessing, of course. The old samurai nods, I have asked for our own allies to respond to this threat also. Allies, Lord Mifun. I recall you remaining neutral to all. To whom do you refer to? A questions with a raised eyebrow, a frown upon his face. This was met with a knowing half-smirk from the aged warrior, who else but White Dawn? Those terrorists. The bulk of a rakage roared, leaping from his seat, terrorists. Why do you call them? I am well aware of your thoughts on them, Lord Rakage. Mifun mentions however, we are also aware of the false flag campaign you have against them. His cold eyes narrowing at him, they are traitors and bandits. Let us calm down. Tsunade suddenly speaking up trying to rein in the convocation, shut it treehugger. Roared that Tsuchikage jumping up ya. Yeah. I bet you harbor those foul missing nin just to spite us. Yelled the rakage, sparks dancing across his massive frame. A massive tick mark appeared on the Lady Hokage's forehead, we didn't even know about them till two months ago. She declared with a huff at the end, causing the room to fall silent. Two snorts fill the room, one from the leader of the Hidden Stone Village, and the other wasn't known, but that soon drowned out by a massive bellowing laughter of the rakage. His laughter continued for several minutes which the Tsuchikage even caught, and the two continued to chuckle for minutes, as Tswan dropped back in her seat, a slight tint of embarrassment, is that true? Asks Mei, the Mizukage, somewhat stunned while Gara maintained a constant smirk as his leaf counterpart just sighed with a resigned nod, seems the great leaf's all-knowing might is not what it once seemed. Bellowed A, with a smug look upon his face with dagger glare at the busty blonde, perhaps however Rakage Mifune, head samurai of the Land of Iron, speaks drawing the bulk of a man's attention, may I also ask as to why your forces are amassing within the Land of Frost. This statement caused many eyes to widen, and to frown at his forces being so easily discovered, but before he could respond, Mifune turns to his side as a white dawn samurai, his matte grey armor and mute white clothes showing his allegiance clearly, approaches and whispers into his ear. The nod from the old man before eyes turn to the rakage on his immediate left, then to the tsuchikage on his direct right, then the hokage sitting opposite may, I ask as to why you, rakage looking to the man tsuchikage, looking at said man before turning to the hokage and you hokage, have bolt, gem, and anbu forces attempting to disrupt this discussion. Eyes again widen it that I don't. Our security forces have them all subdued. Mifune cutting off the rakage, those are rogues. Kamisari explained candidly, clearly trying to bluff his way out, I never gave such orders. The hokage states and yet another snort is heard from the bleachers above yet again, no one pays it no mind for some reason in that case, we shall have to get out answers from them directly. The aged leader remarks glancing to the samurai at his side and offering a small nod, the woman of the independent force, bows her head before departing, you can't. And what, rakage? Demands Mifune, you denounced any participation thus they must be missing nin, no. The rakage bit his lip unaware of the telepathic conversation the hokage was having with one of her escorts, are you sure, Eno? questioned Tsunade with her poker face on full, staring up at the bleacher behind Mifune discreetly positive. It was only for a brief moment, but that chakra signature is his. I'm sure. The Yamanaka responded as her narrowed gaze locked on the same place as her hokage informed Kakashi, and try and tail him. I'll see if we can't end this soon. We need to get back to the village. The connection dropped as the younger blonde turns to her jonin leader Kakashi-sensei, Lady Hokage has a task for us. Oh? A raised eyebrow from the silver-haired jonin, he's here. She whispered and immediately his gaze hardened, you sure? 
She nodded, it wasn't even for a second, but there was a Charka signature behind Lord Mifune. It was faint, but I am positive it's his. Drac, Trace, and Subdue. He questioned, and she nodded, we have to be discreet though. Very well. Then, know this Mifune's commanding voice silenced the bickering leader's hidden stone, you are threatening the neutral countries and are unwilling to back down. This cannot be condoned. Are you going to stop us if we do? As the leader of the neutral countries we shall move according to our treaties. Mifune spoke resolutely with his gaze unflinching. Kamisari growls as he jumps to his feet, is that a threat? If you move on wave, we will stop you. Spoke Gara calmly and as a matter of factly, we will not allow you to trample our trading allies. May states firmly causing the man to glare at the duo before promptly storming off as the rakage was the next to leave, no words exchanged. The door shuts and the hidden leaf, hidden sand, and hidden mist remain, may I ask a question? Tsunade choirs looking between those that remained with raised eyebrows and focused attention her answer, you may. Mifune responds calmly, though he suspected he knew what it was, can you she looks up at the bleachers behind the samurai come down and talk to us about White Dawn. You have some perceptive shinobi, Lady Hokage. A new voice steps out from behind Mifune, his tall six foot one, long blonde hair and a ponytail shinobi with samurai armor on his right shoulder, down his one side, and an impressive katana strapped to his left hip, and the handle of a short nadachi, can be seen at the base of his back poking out to his right. With arms crossed and an impassive face, Naruto Uzumaki had appeared before the Hokage for the first time in a decade, I was curious as to why you had brought the Amanaka in place of another combat or it into shinobi, but now I see. His eyes narrowed seems the second seal was incomplete. I could have handled this. Mifu mentions without turning round sorry sensei. They knew I was here when I heard that drivel they were spouting. My apologies. Very well. The old samurai sighs as the Hokage's mind had locked in on herself, the hidden leaf shinobi also stunned at the boy's appearance, as said individual looked to the other two cages with soft smiles for both May, it's been too long. But it has, Narukai. The auburn-haired woman chuckles with a seductive wink, how's the husband and kids? They are well, thank you. May responds again, though, I am still upset that you turned me down. I prefer my freedom, thanks. Naruto chuckles as he looks to his brother in all but blood, how's the wife Gara? They are well, Naruto. You should come visit. I am sure your nephew would enjoy the company. The Kazakiage mentioned causing a raised eyebrow as the blonde leans against his master's large chair, are you sure you aren't just trying to get me into the village for another lecture? A small innocent smirk appeared on the stoic visage of Gara. I have no idea to what you are referring to. The four all chuckle as the Hokage finally comes back to the room Naruto she whispered, drawing the room's attention, Lady Hokage. With a nod Naruto responds causing more than a pang of guilt to rise within the lady's chest, you need to come back to. I don't need to do anything. Naruto cutting her off with a raised hand, you have Kumo to worry about. As a favor, for old time's sake, we shall take care of the stone, so you can fight without having to worry about a second front. But your banishment. Is none of my concern. Naruto's gaze and tone turn frosty, I have things to do and returning the hidden leaf is not one of them. But it is your home. Was my home. Hasn't been for a decade. You you can't be. Lady Hokage. Mifune speaking up for his last apprentice, my student has helped many people, supported far more than any of us care to count. Should you force your wishes upon him, we shall not stay silent. This is our warning to you. Tsunade was stunned at that, never had she thought that getting her little Naruto back could cause two other hidden villages and the neutral counties to turn against the leaf well, in any case Naruto glancing down at Mifune, turns out the hidden stone used this meeting to draw our attention and forces away from wave and rain. The black ops agents were meant to tie us down longer. Have they been dealt with? Asks Gara to which Naruto nods, my men are already mobilizing. We shall bring the hammer down against the anvil. Crush them from both sides. How wonderfully brutal of you. Mei chimes in, and Naruto's grin was damn right feral, they wanted a war, we'll give them a massacre to dissuade them from trampling upon the innocent. I shall send part of my forces with yours. Mifune declared and Naruto nodded, already taken care of. We depart before sunrise. Pushing off the tall chair as both Kazakiage and Mizukage both led the stand, we shall move toward Wave and box them in. May states with a nod to which Naruto responds in kind, we'll see you there. Wait. Hokage Senju calls out drawing their attention, can we at least ask for aid? Aid? Naruto with a quirked eyebrow to which the twin-tailed blonde nods, they have two Jinchuriki against our nun. If they deploy them. They won't. Naruto remarks calmly causing the woman to freeze up or more accurately, they can't. Neither Nibi nor Geuki are in favor of the course of action, and neither are their containers. They won't fight, I assure you of that. But. But nothing, Lady Hokage. If that'll be all, I must take my leave. I'll see you both later. 
Naruto looking to the other two cages who both nod as they two begin to leave as the blonde turns to his master, I shall take my leave, Master Mifune. I'd well, my student. And with that the blonde samurai trained shinobi left, two more white dawn samurai appearing upon his flank with a pair of shinobi appearing behind them as he heads off into the dark corridor. Tsunade was broken, a feeling merit upon her face which caused a sad smile to appear on the old warrior's normally stoic visage, you lost a gem in that one. Was his parting words as he too left. Land of Iron, Three Wolves Mountain Fortress. Naruto walks through his men and women who are chatting and cheering for their successful mission. The samurai of iron were mingling among them as if they were one and the same which momentarily brought a smile upon his face, many among those around offering salutes, and he nods at them as he passes. Reaching the gate he stops beside one of his most trusted commanders, so, it's over then. Yeah. Stone and Lightning are not backing down. Who are we going after then? Stone. They are marching toward Wave, our ally. If Lightning goes after the Leaf, we won't interfere. A snort was the response, listen Shitston, if you want to go help them, we can go. Hey Aya. Naruto turns on her, the tone in his voice killed the words in her throat, as the only man she respected enough to care about his intent glared at her, remember the rules. Stay away from the land of fire and ultimately the hidden leaf. We have more important things to worry about. What about the sound? We still need to pay that bastard back for backing out the deal we had. The redhead states as she fully turns to him, her folded arms upon her hips, he'll get wets coming to him. Holding out his hand, she sighs while pulling out his smokes from her pocket, you'll get your pound of flesh. Which causes a truly sinister grin to form upon her lip, I sure hope so. As she takes the smoke, he just lit for herself. He simply lights another, and the two just stare at the frozen tundra before them, enjoying the peace, even though it was only for the moment, are you going to deal with them now, or later? She questioned as they continue looking forward I was going to later, but seems you freaked them into action. Naruto growled as she chuckles, my bad. As two shinobi appear at their backs what do you want, Miss Yamanaka, Mr. Haddock? Naruto. We need you back. Kakashi states simply, you already have my answer. So does your leader. The blonde responds without turning back, he pauses from his smoke before looking to his red-headed friend oh, you messed up on their seals. Impossible. Tewaya snaps back but he points with his thumb, she's a Yamanka. You didn't use the right one on her. She's why I had to deal with this shit. Taya's mouth opens to retort, but her mind froze, and it shut again, causing a victorious smirk to appear on Naruto's face. Please, Naruto-kun. The no please causing two raised eyebrows that glance at one another then back at the two-leaf shinobi, where the fuck did that come from? Naruto questioned and Taya had to bite back her comment of him spending too much time with her, the leaf will fall without you. Kakashi illiterates which causes the duo to snort very loudly at that, sure it will. Speaking in unison, didn't stop them from kicking him out. Good thing they did though Naruto remarks at the redeed or you'll be a cripple at best, prisoner at worst. She punches him, yeah yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter anymore. Aya snaps back, but both snap to the silver-haired Jonin who took a step toward them, I have to take you back, Naruto suddenly he is knocked out by the blonde Chunin at his side which confused the duo, didn't actually think that would work. Ino says looking at her fellow shinobi out cold in the snowy ground, which she just. Tewaya questioned knock him out. No idea. I want to join you. Ino stated firmly, clearly, and much to the confusion of the two with genuine excitement, you what? I want to join White Dawn. The more I hear of it, the more it seems like I should be here instead of. You're an heiress of a major clan within the Hidden Leaf. It isn't that simple. Naruto comments taking out another two smokes, you'll be classed as a missing nin, unable to return. She scoffs oh please. I have no prospects back there. Sai was my last serious relation which was like five years ago. My dad wanted to marry me to a cousin that I can't stand, and I'm stuck at Chunin until the war's end. No thanks. The two White Dawn members look to one another in silent confusion. Chapter 3, Confrontations. Land of Hot Springs, Coastline. Bodies litter the ground as the preemptive strike from the White Dawn proved overwhelmingly effective, and Nagato's forces pushed the enemy back further and further after their beach landing. The former Akatsuki leader knew however his forces' positions was shaky and tentative at best, but the enemy's retreat was so chaotic that they never even thought about counter-attacking. Smirking, Nagato looks back at his forces despite their success they were down to just above half, we've done well. They didn't expect a counter-attack, let alone a preemptive one. No shit. Another white dawn samurai chuckled, the enemies had no idea we. Something's not right. Nagato with narrowing his eyes at the enemy's retreating forces, that direction is toward the town. He glances at his squadron of fighters, I think the second and third team are in trouble. We'll need to move quick to guide them away from the civilians. They all nod no rest for the wary. 
The samurai sighs out returning to his feet, offering a hand to Nagato who took it appreciatively, this is our fight, we should see it through to the end. Just as Nagato reported, the stone ninja group retreated toward the nearby town right into the White Dawn's defense teams. They were holding them back, albeit barely, but with the arrival of Nagato's squadron, smiles lit up the troubled defenders faces all forces. Push em back. Roared a female samurai with her sword raised with a war cry that rattled the stone shinobi, and the panic spread like wildfire. It was moments later when the stone had retreated, and the white cloud troops cheered in jubilation as they completed their mission to clear the land of hot springs, without even needing the backup squad. Land of hot springs, border with stone. Naruto, Teia, and Larn lead their forces into Land of Hot Springs, charging at their fastest speed to assist their allies in the Land of Waves, unaware of Nagato's successful preemptive defensive strike. As the rising dawn rested near the border it was Naruto, who was on guard duty whilst his men and women slept or ate, who spotted the group of shinobi approaching all units. The yells and immediately everyone stood or sat at attention battle stations. It didn't take even a full two minutes before the lines were filled with rising dawn forces, lined up at the behest of their leader, who stood with his arms crossed eyes narrowed at the approaching forces. The fucking assets aren't coming at us. Tai landing beside her best friend and leader, some are injured. So I see. Naruto with a growing grin with sinister undertone that Tai loved are we? All forces. Naruto bellowed which caught the stone shinobi attention charge. A battle cry that was even more fear-inducing than the last group, the Iwa shinobi had just ran from. Over the horizon off to the columns 2 o'clock, banners of rising white dawn appear as samurai and shinobi appear rushing forward toward them incoming. Hole. Isn't that. Their leader. One chun and gulp Naruto Uzumaki white death the man paused upon seeing the red head at his side shit. Isn't that. Yeah. Tei Uzumaki red whistle this also fall off as the third figure comes into view, blue steel larn. Fuck. And panic flew though the group. A slaughter reminiscent of the Third Shinobi War, Battle of Kanabi Bridge as the White Dawn swept across the fields, cutting down the Stone Shinobi with vengeance. Earth and rocks are thrown about as jutsus were thrown about, but this was nothing for the group of former missing ninjas who ducked and weaved around them, countering with the ease of veterans they were. These former missing shinobi didn't fight fair, the ronin well versed in shinobi tactics, the fight was swift as much as it was brutal, and blood soaked the grass fields and dirt roads, and over the span of an hour, the last twelve of a force of nearly six hundred shinobi. Land of hot springs, Lucan town. Naruto and Teia dropped down into a sofa within Nagato's command tent, the one he aggressively acquired from the Iwa shinobi. The two were covered in blood, dirt, and sweat as the duo exhales hard, that was rough, Teia declares as she lays back on her best friend's chest. Nagato walks in to find his fellow Yuzumaki asleep on his new couch, Naruto on the bottom Teia atop with their swords, mimicking their stance on the opposite seating. He smirks as he passes them by say nothing, Nagato. The duo spoke in unison, neither even creaking open an eye wasn't going to, though I believe your new project is looking for you. Ah shit the Kanoichi grumbled into that chest of godly proportion that belonged to the leader of the group she belonged to. Flap of the door caused Nagato to glance up to see their newest requisition, a blonde Kanoichi formerly of the leaf standing in awe as she stares at his two cousins, currently snoozing on the coach, can I help you, recruit. His stern voice called out jolting said newcomer from her swirling thoughts, her attention falling on the red-headed dejutsu user um I came for my orders. Ah. His aged face showing a faux concerned, lowering a folder of files from his field of vision to gaze upon her which froze her stiff so, recruit, what is your skill said exactly. Combat medic was the swift response from the woman which causes a raised red eyebrow then, why are you here and not in the medical tent? Um well the thing is. Just leave. Nagato returning to his files, the medical personnel will appreciate the help. I am C. Very well. She bowed, turned, and left. The snort and stifled laughter from the three Uzumaki after the former leaf shinobi, left clearly frazzled at the disrespectful dismissal. She's a stuck-up bitch. You want to talk. Naruto chuckles causing a muffled thump of Teia's fist upon his shoulder, I am a refined lady, thank you very much. If you're refined, then I'm a pure redhead. Naruto snarky response which gained another harder punch to his shoulder as she finally lifted her head and glared at her clansmen beneath her, I am refined right. Enough you too. Nagato stepping in, we still need to sort out the land of frost situation, right? Nah we don't Teia casually waving off his concern, a raised eyebrow caused her to sigh as her elbow rested upon Naruto's chest, head resting on her knuckles, completely ignoring the discomfort of her clansmen after all, we have already done the land of fire, more than enough of a favor, by knocking Iwa down a few pegs. Causing the elder redhead to chuckle at that, nodding along with that. Land of rain, schooling tower. Gin leads the guards, disguised as family friends, of the command kids, the children of the commanders of the white dawn. 
Although many saw them as royalty the shinobi families were respectful, which caused the civilian born to fangirl fanboy at them. Bashina and Bashir led the group of her fellow command kids into the classroom that erupted into to cheers, squeals, and hyperactive eagerness which caused a sigh from the tiny Ritid's lips, these fools. Spoken beneath that escaped breath as she follows her best friend Bashir or lighten up, red. You're redder than I am. Growled Kashina as the horse-tailed youth known as Bashir, son of Taya, had stuck his tongue out with his golden eyes glistening with mirth. Her comment upon the boy's hair was accurate as Bashir, much like his mother, had a very light shade of red in his hair, almost pink, and was easily flustered, at least for Kashina's childhood friends. Land of rain, school entrance. Hey Bashir calls out another of the command kids, Ashina, son of Karen, waves over at the duo of Bashir and Kashina. Ashina was a full inch taller than the others, despite being few months older than the rest, though his short scarlet hair, matching glasses, blue pupil s eyes kushi, glad you're here too. Shin, why are you here? Spoke Ashina clearly annoyed at being treated as a child, despite only being five herself well, Kushi Ashina smiles, I found out that Uncle Nar is coming home. Appa is Kashina almost yells yes he is. Her mother, Kin calls out and you should behave yourself to show him how good of a girl you've been. Upon this the small girl, immediately straightened up and rushed toward the door, are you coming mom? Land of rain, entrance of aim. The White Dawn's battalions can be seen atop the bridge that was designed and built by Tazuna upon the request of Naruto, moving toward their waiting families and loved ones. The first and second groups arrived first, led by Tai and Larn respectively, with them moving off as the rest of the battalions begin to set across. Tai hocked Ino's arm around her own with a sickly sweet smile oh, I need you to come with me. Got some stuff we need to sort out. These words caused the hairs on the blonde's neck to stand on end. But the arrival of the second company, a small street parade turned full-blown city-wide party. It continued to swell upon the arrival of the third and fourth groups. Nagato and Naruto were costly conversing with one another as they reached the city entrance, which had become a public park filled with greenery filled with people awaiting to be reunited with their loved ones. The third and fourth company arrived back on the tail end of the second, cheers from the party beyond this park could be heard causing many returning home to begin to smile. As the two Uzumaki step off the bridge a dark red blur of a missile smashed into the younger of the two, caught and swung round onto said man's back in one swift movement Papa. Kushi? How's my little girl? Have you been a good girl? Naruto chuckles lightheartedly, Nagato smiling alongside his clansmen at the heartwarming sight. Sorry Hunkin stepping up and kissing Naruto as the two hug, she got away from me. It's fine his soft chuckle was music to her ears as she snuggled into his warm chest, a content sigh escaping her mouth before she could resist it. Papa. Another child cheered, Kenshin being picked up by his father Nagato, you should be calmer. Keep your. Relax cousin Naruto elbowing his clansmen their children. Let them be children. But in the improv parade, Naruto and Kin alongside Nagato, watched as the next generation of their clan playing several stands. Kishina held onto her dad's hand as she continued to lick on her ice cream, this is nice. Kin speaks softly, the two trained shinobi the only two to catch, this is the peace we seek, no. Naruto looking to Nagato who nods before glancing around at the smiling faces, cheering as the kids enjoying the rare day of sunshine and rainbow indeed. His eyes then look down to his son, currently explaining to Relihan, in great detail, how candied apples were better than candy floss, and the benefits of such a decision. Land of Rain, Hidden Rain Village. Naruto enters the executive office of Conan, the angel of Hidden Rain Village. With all the members of the five companies present. As he sat down with his fellows, the air was thick with tension, as all eyes fall onto Conan, whose amber eyes pierce the low-lit room, with everyone here, let us begin as the table seemed to illuminate, and a map came into view. The silence was definitive, and the occupants shifted silently as eyes scanned the room firstly, let us briefly talk of the failed attack on the conference she continued, as the large map of the elemental nations fades to a view of the land of iron. Several squads of black ops attempted to ambush the conference. Our forces in conjunction with the Samurai of the Land, successfully subjugated forces of Lee Sanbu, Lightning's Bolt, and Stone's Gem. Conan spoke consistency and firmly our interrogations have confirmed that they were indeed all gem using stolen uniforms. As expected. Naruto comments flatly gaining nods from all around um how did you know that? A voice that actually caught Naruto off guard, not that he showed it, causing him to glance up behind his foul-mouthed cousin to see a platinum blonde, former Kanoichi of the Hidden Leaf. Not even offering the woman a moment of attention his eyes look back to Taiya, who communicates with only her eyes an apology they've been broken and chakra sealed, as per our usual standard procedure. Spoke Taiya in a similar manner as her fellows, brushing the newbie's question under the rug. The cough allows Conan to regain the momentum, as for the wave defense operation. 
The map moves toward Island of Wave before refocusing on Hot Spring because of a recklessly bold move from the commander of the 4th Company, and almost impossibly narrowing of her eyes at a certain Rinnegan wielding Yuzumaki, who was one of three to notice, in place of the defensive operation. The 4th pushed a surprise offensive which caught the enemy off guard and forced them to rout. Naruto swore he saw a sparkle in Nagato's eyes, his stoic mask in place firmly, which almost caused his own to break, thankfully Conan continued stoically, first through third group arrived, and eradicated the remaining forces in a pincer. Various pictures of the battleground, with both before and after we aimed to please. Larn states causing all eyes to fall upon him, a cough from somewhere before everyone looks back to Conan thus, with the prisoners, we are in a good position however tensions with the stone are at an all-time high. Conan glances around at the group of her commanders, I have increased our patrols upon the borders. For now, focus on interior mission aspects, after standard provisional cool down time. Any other issues? Silence fills out the room, causing the woman to nod dismissed. The room had emptied as Naruto exits, leaving Conan and Nagato behind Yo Blondi. Catching his attention toward the two ladies leaning against the wall, Yo Scarlet. Naruto responds, pulling out a cigarette before nodding her head toward the blonde why she here. Really Naruto? Ino with arms on her hips as Naruto looks at her as if she was stupid. His blank stare caused her to start squirming beneath his gaze, causing a snort from Teaya who hands over a hundred Ryo bill to Naruto, while snatching said cancer stick from him. Walking off, the two ladies follow after him, drinks are on you tonight. Naruto announces and Teaya waves her off, you know I don't go back on my fucking word either shitface. So, let's get shitfaced. Your puns suck harder than Larn's. The blonde chuckles causing the shorter Yuzumaki to glare at him fucked she growls. Ino awoke with the mother of all hangovers, the whole world seemed submerged and spinning, whilst her throat was dry and stomach heavy. A groggy cornflower blue eye creaks open, hissing at the light from the window, a growl escaped her parched throat. Before she knew it a head popped in from the hallway, Miss Kanoichi a woman's voice echoed within her head, pounding hard causing her to further scrunch up her face, you need to get up and meet with the captain. She groans in response to this voice fine. Her whisper and a soft chuckle. The knock on the door broke Karen from her paperwork, stacked high, within her own tower office, allowed her to break from the monotonous tasks at hand, come in. A timid blonde step in, her chakra was not familiar, causing the Riti to raise an eyebrow and you are. Ino Yamanaka the girl whispers which reminded her about what Teaya had told her that morning, about the newest defector. Karen was barely able to suppress her vicious smirk, threatening to grace her face ah yes, I've been expecting you. Gesturing to the chair before her while placing the file she was handling into the out pile. So, why am I here? Ino questioned Aang the woman opposite first of all, Miss Yamanaka Karen began with a hard glare, stone face, let's get something straight right off the bat, shall we? The room growing notably cooler and heavy, causing the new arrival to try desperately suppressing the fidgeting her body was trying to exhibit. The only reason I'm entertaining this moronic idea Karen took pride noticing the raised heckles of allowing you within my hospital is because my dearest cousin decided to dumb you on me. Then why am I here? Ino almost whispered word, were it not for my dearest cousin's Karen narrowing her eyes, I would have thrown you to the wolves and T and I. Then why am I? As I said. Karen snipped, my cousins are the ones that convinced me. Cousins? Ino questioned causing the redhead to sigh, this was going to be a long day. Ashina's day in Ova. Papa? I exclaimed jumping onto the bed that housed my papa. He heaved out as he was forced out of bed, catching the me as I fell on him again, Kushi. Damn. He wheezed as his little girl grinned up at him foxily, much like his own, Mama told me you don't have no work today, so I want to. SHHHSHHH Naruto placing his index finger upon her tiny lips, smiling fully, let's get breakfast. She nods rapidly, but before she could jump off, her father lifted her up, eliciting a giggle from the girl, as she finds herself cradled in her father's arms. His laughs were melodious to the five-year-old, her big strong papa is spending the day with her. Breakfast was a cheerful affair, Kashina eating her breakfast atop her daddy's lap which was something she hadn't done in forever. Walking through the streets, holding Papa's hand as he runs his errands, Kashina hops along with a skip while holding hands as they reach the dojo. Inside there were people swinging bamboo swords in a pattern. They all saw her, but their eyes were scaring, so she stepped behind her Papa, which caused said man to step forward after a small glance, and immediately the scary eyes step back and bow. Grr I suggest you all back the bad word off. Sir. They all course. After meeting Uncle Arn and Auntie Neela, the sword people, Papa took me to the hospital probably to see Auntie, but after we did. Someone spoke to Daddy then we left before we saw Auntie, but he took me to the park, and we got ice cream. He let me ride on his shoulders, Papa's so big. When lunch was done, we got Raymond. Couldn't beat Papa. I had six bowls. Papa gave me a piggyback ride as we went to the training ground. 
Just like Mama said, he said that controlling my chaka is really important. Unlike Mama though we played tag but up on the walls and trees. It was so cool. Before dinner we went onto the roof and he made a promise to me, he will always come home to me. Land of Rain, Office of Shinobi Matters. A knock on his office called Naruto's attention, come in. And the door swings open revealing Karen Uzumaki, bringing a huge smile to his face Karen. Nara the two embrace gently, firmly, tenderly, I was so worried about you. You were the one on the front lines Karen whispered back as they slowly pulled back, their arms still locked, I should be asking you that. PFFT, please you know full well. Idiot. She gently punches him, as she recenters herself to return to her big bad bitch image. They both return back to their business mode as Karen stands before Naruto's desk report. The medical staff have requested some time off after the current surge. Handing over the report, to which Naruto looks over the first couple of pages I see. How about this he responds before pauses upon the three lists of staff. A moment of pause is right. Looking up at his clansmen, after the med nins recover for the next three days, then they'll switch out for the doctors and reduce the nurse's hours to allow them to recover also. Karen smirked at that figured as much. Already got it planned out. Naruto rises an eyebrow at that, then why did you? The pulse of chakra emits from Karen's feet, forcefully activating Naruto's hidden security seals, which created a bubble of privacy around the room. Land of Rain, Hidden Rain Village. The gado knocks on the door which promptly opens bout time gramps. Teia comments stepping aside I'm not old. The older of the two which caused a snort from the younger brash Kinoichi so, where's Bashir? Staying with his cousins. I see. Breakfast. Teia offered as she stepped into the open plan kitchen no. Just here to escort her. Oh? A raised eyebrow from the foul-mouthed redeed, we wish to verify some facts. I bet. Snickered Teia as she appeared with his typical cup of tea which he accepts graciously, taking her own cup as she sat down. Within moments Ino stepped in while drying her hair with a towel, ah paused a moment, Nagato Yuzumaki. Nagato states before sipping his tea right Ino says, I also happen to be your friend's uncle. This caused Ino to pause, as in. He's Nira's mother's younger brother. Teia clearing up any confusion woe. Regardless Nagato standing up we have an appointment to tend to. We do. Ino questioned hesitantly to which Nagato nodded, we do. A lump in Ino's throat formed and wasn't helped by the snickering of Teia, allow me to reintroduce myself, Nagato Yuzumaki. Head of torture and intelligence of the White Dawn. A very familiar yet somewhat darker smirk appeared upon the older Ritid's face I look forward to our interview. Land of Rain, Hidden Rain Village. Central Spire. Two months later. Naruto. A voice calls as Teia approaches the T-junction with her own folders in arm Tei. She growled at that name really. Teia. Naruto chuckles after a moment, and the two continue to move on to their destination, so how's the roommate? Another growl from the shorter of the two, why does the bitch have to stay with me? Teia status growled deeply, I haven't had any time with my little sure. He's been doing well. Naruto casually threw out, I see. Her head lowers after this meeting through, why not join me in picking up the kids, and we can. Really Naruto looks to her with a raised eyebrow, she collects herself and returned to her default bitch mode no shit, I am sure my runt wants his wicked mom around. The two laugh along before arriving back to the office they were called to. Land of Rain, Central Spire, Meeting Room 1. Glad you could make it, Naruto. Spoke Conan calmly as said man and his best friend enter the large room, we aren't late, are we? Not at all. Still waiting on my lovely husband and that stickman. Conan jokes flatly causing Naruto to smirk, Teia so snicker, I have a name you know. Spoke Larn, in his battle kimono on both his Tachi and Wakizashi on his belt, how'd you get your weapons in here? Naruto with a raised eyebrow family heirlooms. Larn responded with air quotes, Naruto snapping to Conan, that isn't fair. Stickman her monotone voice seemed so cold, Naruto and Teia swore they saw icicles upon the dark wooden table polished top. I told you already, Miss Ino. Nagato spoke softly and calmly as they made their way through the hall's central spire, this is not the time nor place to speak of your current assignment. I am currently late to my meeting with. Stickman was hurt and from the tone Nagato needed no more incentive leave. His parting words before stepping into the room to find Larn placing his weapons on the table. He knew what had caused his beloved wife to grow irate. Unbeknownst to them all, Ino saw Naruto and Tei among the other gathered heads. She knew this meeting was of department heads, so now she had a way in. Originally her association with Nagato allowed her access to the low level of the torture and intelligence division, not knowing it was all planned on their side, but now spotting her old friend, a new avenue had opened up for her. Now that we're all here. Conan states unnecessary, but not one person dared address that let us begin. Looking to Nagato so, if you would. Well, we've had been contact with our allies. 
The oldest Yuzumaki speaks out, Waterfall has requested additional help for their border. Seems Stone is getting rowdy after the conflict with us. I don't that's too bright an idea Taya cut in, after the ass kicking we gave them, it will only incite the fuckers. I second that. Naruto adds on Cooley to cover the brashness of his favorite cousin, if there are any humanitarian missions. With the conclusion of our medical project in Wave, there's only Rivers, hospital left and an invite to missed courtesy of the Mizukage. Conan responded a Naruto who understood the underlying annoyance of that last request. This suggests that he was involved with that in particular request which caused him to groan in silence. Conan smirks inwardly at Naruto's reaction to her words, knowing that he had caught on, can we turn down Miss Terumi? Not realistically. Larn Cutting and our swordsmen are doing joint training with both the Mist Shinobi and Water Samurai. Losing them could cause a few too many ripples we could do without. Naruto sighs and nods along with it that is true. Though looking to his boss, Conan Claw is also requesting an audience with me directly. Grass wants to increase our cooperation on orders of their daimyo. He explained causing a few eyes to widen, though before any comments of pity could be spoken, as much as I hate to say it Conan looking back at her head of shinobi affairs Naruto, but I will need you to deal with Mist as a priority. Dealing with Grass, Claw, and Rivers will be handled by your subordinates. By your orders. Naruto states closing his folded files before leaning back. Any issues with the samurai? Land of Iron has sent us a request for escort of their latest caravan. Land of T would like to induct a squadron into our training program. Why not with the Land of Iron? Asked Conan with a raised simple. Iron's entrance exams are a bit too demanding. Ours is not so much. Not only that, but the Land of Iron have been known to grab our best in the top of the class. Larn informs and they grab the relevant files, though we are running low on prime blades for the graduation groups. We'll have to wait until the current set of patrols from Allied Forces finish and paid for before we place the next orders. Conan states looking to Amaru and Karen, what about our medical supplies? We're fine for the next three months. Amaru pushing a lock of her reddish-brown hair behind her ear, even with a new building and wave. Then we are in relatively good shape. Nagato comments to which he receives nods all around. The faintest hints of a smile form upon Conan's face, an untrained observer wouldn't have spotted it, but those within the room could all tell as if she was grinning like a certain Yuzumaki. Land of Rain, Hidden Rain Village, Streets. After the meeting, Naruto could be seen strolling through the industrial streets of Hidden Rain Village. With the smiling citizens waving at him and offering small bows to which he returns. Turning a corner onto Park Road, and with a sigh he addresses his tail, what can I do for you Ino? Maintaining his stride as she stumbles out from the corner behind, you knew. Since before I left the tower. Naruto clarifies as she rushes to match his pace oh. Um. So? Why are you following me? Well, you see I wanted to know why you are avoiding me. I came here hoping to connect with you again. Ino began, which caused Naruto to turn on her connect with me. Ino, we were never close. Even if we did begin to develop a relationship in the hospital after that failed mission, nothing happened. I know but. It's been 10 years Ino. We are former classmates. Not friends or anything. Naruto informs rather harshly. Her hurt expression actually caused a pang of guilt within his heart, her slumped shoulders adding to the effect to which another sigh escapes his lips as he pulled her into a firm hug, much to her surprise. The two stood there in silence, the weight of her decisions finally coming down as reality fully sets in. She was surrounded by possible enemies, her only source of comfort was a friend not quite friend, yet here in his arms, she found so much comfort and serenity that it was like she was back in the hidden leaf all safe and sound. You feeling better? He whispered into her ear, gently to which she nodded softly, her grip on his jacket firm, yet a tremble of desperation could be felt by Naruto, who tenderly tightened the embrace, do you want me to walk you home? He whispered to which she nodded again, where are you staying? Continuing, pretending not to know about her situation in its entirety, um I'm staying with your cousin. Her almost whisper into his shoulder to which he stifles his chuckles, the best he could at least, but the mirth did not leave with it, which one? I have a number of clansmen here. I think she finally pulls back, still rather withdrawn we all thought you were a clan less orphan. He chuckles softly at that. So, who are you staying with? Naruto holding the blonde by the shoulders at arm's length, cornflower gray into cerulean blue, Tei Yuzumaki. Ino states causing Naruto to snort at that, despite knowing that already Tei Tei, huh? Tei Tei? Never call her that. He nearly growled with narrowed eyes, she will kill you, then gulps then me. She giggles at that while gesturing a zip-lipped, my lips are sealed. Her smile was warm, chest lightened significantly after this small interaction which will later come to haunt Yamanaka, to the point where she would turn her back on her home for real. Chapter 4. Seas Waves and Sand. Hidden Rain Village. Residential Tower. Naruto yawns as he awakens with his loving wife still snoozing atop his chest. 
The last few weeks have been tough on him, true, however he and Kin have barely been able to spend too much time with one another. Last night they had a date night, Juk, Relihan, and Kashina, all staying the night with Karen and her son Ashina. Stroking her silky brunette locks softly, just like how he used to when they were younger, oh god are we that old. That thought briefly halted his administrations which alerted the recipient, you were thinking something stupid just now, weren't you? His soft chuckle was his response to her question, you know me too well, princess. MMM you should keep going. Kin continues with him restarting the stroking, her beaming smile. Breakfast turned into mid-afternoon lunch as the husband and wife enjoy their alone time together, which was far too infrequent in these times. Land of fire, Hokage office. Come in. Sunade Senju calls out and Shikamu and Anko enter which caused the cage to lift her eyebrow up while placing writing utensils down. Lady Hokage, we have new information on the White Dawn. Oh? The slug princess states with a growing smile, do tell. We have reason to believe that they are moving toward the land of rivers. Send a force to invite them over for a chat. The Hokage giving a knowing look to her two subordinates who both wordlessly nod before vanishing in plumes of smoke. Looking down at her paperwork she thought about her newest guests. Land of River, Shinobi Highway. Leaping through the trees, Naruto recalls the day off he had four days ago when suddenly Karen drops back to his side company. How many? Two squads. And will level. She confirms and he smirks guys he whispered loudly enough to be heard only by him, I have an idea. With a mischievous grin upon his face. Bakashi finds himself leading his old Anbu team, he swore he had left this life behind, yet in these troubling times, his unique skills been needed more and more. Another captain hops beside him sir, we have a trail. Understood Kakashi states, we'll need to intercept them. Before they slip into Water County, if we don't know other words needed to be spoken as they sped up. It wasn't long before the two groups would collide, and the Hidden Leaf Anbu block off the escape route of the White Cloud forces, five shinobi and three samurai, which was a surprise as many were unaware at the thought of samurai using shinobi techniques. White Cloud, you are to come with us. Kakashi instructs coolly without much seeming interest, a dangerous glint in his eyes understand. You have some nerve trying to confront us so openly. One samurai mentioned, his sword hand ready to draw, we simply wish to offer you an invitation to our village several snorts, an invitation via two squads of Anbu. Sure, sounds wonderful. One of the shinobi escorts, his hand on his tanto, the neutral lands will not take this lightly. Only for a blade to reach his neck, they won't hear anything about it. The Anbu states causing the others to chuckle, you will regret this. The redhead declared, just come quietly. The others enclosing on them before the white cloud forces leap offensively and blades clash. Bakashi barely dodged as a blade bisects his mask revealed the leaf plate partially. The swordsman response was confusing for the Sherrigan user, just as we suspected. A nod before the entire group puffed away in clouds of smoke. It took a moment. Several in fact before it hit them TSK, Shadow Clones. Land of Rivers, Port Jakra. Naruto sat on the hidden mist vessel when the clones all dispersed and he gained their memories. He blinked once, twice oh, and the winner is Karen. It was Leaf Anbu. He announced and many bills filled said Kanoichi's outstretched hand, a smug grin upon her face. The ship continued to leave the port, sailing on beyond the reach of the hidden leaf force. Snorts from the group of white cloud people chuckled on the wake of their escape. After securing her winnings, Karen approaches her clan's men with a soft smile, as he leans on the edge railing, the man looking out at the flowing ocean waves, you know, we haven't had time to chat like we used to, you know. We've gotten so many requests these days. Naruto sighs without breaking eye contact away from the horizon, we've been all over the place, finally his blue meets her red you too, have just gotten back from the hospital construction in wave, and now we're going to mist. This is what we signed up for thought Karen states, as she lowers her head into her folded arms, we even managed to find our lost clansmen. That we did. Naruto nods with a soft smile, saved the world from Madichiha ghosts. That we did. Ended the civil war in the land of water. That we did. We've done so much. She continued before glancing at him, any one of them could be considered a lifetime achievement award. Naruto chucked to which she joined in with. A sigh from him we should retire. A snort from her snapped his attention and do what? Rebuild the clan. This time it was his time to snort ya, that'll get old real quick. Burning a raised eyebrow from his fellow's clansmen, what's that supposed to mean? We already have five new clansmen and all the paperwork already he shuddered. She snorted at that as they fall into companionable silence. That night Naruto sat on the edge of his hammock within his quarters pondering how things have turned out. How after his banishment he traveled home, used a shasho and met with the ghosts of his clan elders. Received the training he should have had years earlier, and then his promise to them to restore the clan's honor and bring back the name of the clan into the history books. 
They bestowed upon him the name of Yuzukage, but upon his insistence, they allowed him to pass it off to the next generation, as he himself didn't exactly feel worthy of such a title. They disagreed however they held their tongues of protest. His musing were cut short with a knock on the door ya. Yeah. Glancing up to see Karen step in, closing the door behind silently, can we talk? Sure. Gesturing to the lone seat in the small cabin, I wanted to ask you why you refuse to be called clanhead. I already told you. You know you can't lie to me, right? Karen looking him dead in the eyes, unflinchingly and with a stern visage. He sighs hard, head in hand as he ponders his past, I know he finally produces but, after I was kicked out of Kanoha, I'm not the leader type. She snorts at that gaining his attention as she sat back, arms and leg folded, that's bullshit, and you know it his protest died upon her glare, you may claim that Nagato is the leader, Conan too, but it is clear as day to everyone that none of this would have been possible without you. Her legs swap over, you are our leader both the clan and Dawn. We've long since accepted that. Her glare softens, why can't you? I'm a wanted man who is desperate to protect my family, clan, and friends. Naruto snapped at her, it shocked her, but she did not let that show, so many what-if scenarios constantly plague me. The fact that I, as a half-blood and carrier of the fox means that. Like that matters Karen scoffs at his flimsy response, you are Yuzumaki. That half-blood crap is your attempt at disqualifying yourself and quite frankly getting on everyone's nerves. We don't exactly have the numbers where those things matter, and even still Naruto just listened as she somehow read him like an open book, then again, she always had, we are family. The clan, regardless of what you say or want, as clan head you need to. I get it. He sighs out finally meeting her eyes, I'll talk to Kin when we get back. Karen nodded, accepting his decision that wasn't really needed, but whatever okay. Now on to why I actually came here Naruto's hanging head snapped up at her, incredulous look upon his face, you mean. I wanted to. Land of water, hidden village of mist. The White Dawn group arrived at the village hidden in the mist, met at the gate by the Mizukage, Mei Terumi, welcome to the hidden mist village, Commander Yuzumaki. Thank you Lady Mizukage. Naruto responded with a salute, come, we have much to discuss. The party moved through the village with many looking at them in awe upon spotting their white diesel armor plating. The members of the White Dawn held their heads high, Ino who was walking close to the center of the group, her new uniform was reminiscent of Naruto's, but her narrow katana was on her back. This was a sign to the others that she had only finished the basic level within the White Dawn training she had undergone. The more proficient weapon users of the group knew this, kept an eye on her as Naruto had informed them all of her status. Land of Water, Hidden Mist Council. Mei leads the group into the council chamber with them all standing Lady Mizukage. And she waved them off as she took her seat at the head of the table, well, let's get this dealt with. Let's. Naruto taking a seat before them all so, I hear that you want to induct a portion of your forces within our own, with the ability to poach our own. Am I correct? To which they all nod well seeing as that's the opening offer, I can only adjust it as our training methods aren't to be understated. Naruto with his firm visage and Karen, who was at his side dubbed it his commander mode. Affectionately. Steeping his fingers, eyes narrowed, so, what are you offering my forces? This demeanor change did not go unnoticed by the other room's occupants, and the whole mood shifted accordingly. Karen and Eno Stone faced at his sides, the former presenting the paperwork this far well. Hidden Leaf, Hokage Office. What the hell do you mean, they got away? Tsunade with a growing tick mark, eyebrow twitching well Kakashi mutters, we managed to track them through river country. Though a shrug from the Anbu captain, his team motionless statues. They managed to give us lip. How? The Hokage questioned with a raised eyebrow, we don't really know. You don't know? We don't. We found a group of shadow clones. Kakashi reported somewhat sheepishly. The Hokage sighs heavily, rubbing her temples exasperatedly, fine. Did you at least get an identification on the group? Negative head shakes. Land of water, hidden mist council. You drive a hard bargain mate Terumi states through her interlocking fingers, can we not pay you at 30% in place of 40, and have a reduction of the samurai conscripts with Anbu level training for three teams? Naruto ponders this, taking a paper from Karen absent-mindedly looking over the current training roster who shook his head no. We can't do that. Though, we can train two Anbu teams alone in four weeks. He states but at 40, pausing as Karen whispered in his ear to which he nods at perhaps at 30%. This cause made a tighten her lips, it was a good counter offer, and it would allow them to increase their strength faster, but with only two teams, how about one team and two squadrons of samurai? She had to include the samurai as their daimyo was rather persistent in the upgraded to his personal guard. A slight sigh escaped her delicate lips. Naruto on the other hand pondered this returned offer, glancing back at the training schedule, he swirls the idea around before looking back at the book, let me check with yet again, Karen came through with another book, swiped it from Larn. She whispered and he smiled, I owe you for one. 
A moment of him looking through what appeared to be a dairy, a nod later, yeah, we can do that. A collective sigh of relief from the Mist Council, very well. May states as the document was drawn up while the White Dawn contingent packed up their documentations, sealing scrolls in heavy usage. Ino re-read the documentation ensuring it matched the discussions, Karen triple-checking afterwards, and the two department commanders signed it alongside the Mizuki Janambu commander. As handshakes were shared and smiles exchanged, Ino watched as Naruto easily wooed the diplomats and Shinobi. She watched as he deflected the affections of the Mizukage with freighting efficiency, the many suck-ups were redirected, and finally his smile seemed to dazzle the remaining Kinoichi. She felt somewhat out of place, her friend seemed to have overcome his social skill issues, but before she could think harder on it, and this is my newest diplomatic envoy, Ino Yamanaka and my childhood friend. Naruto's voice dragged her back to the room that was now looking at her, uh. Perrin had to smother her chuckle at the swift redirection her cousin just pulled off. As he stepped beside her both grin should keep her busy with paperwork, huh? It should. The redhead chuckled at that, so, are you sure of that decision? Giving her a position beside you? Jovial tone had vanished growing serious. Naruto matched it in a fierce glare, you don't want her, Tay didn't, I wouldn't want her near Larn, and I doubt uncle would either. So what? You are taking her on then? Karen snipped to which he nodded, it was my idea to bring her in, turn her on her own, and so I'll take responsibility. Naruto informs as the crowd begins to thin out, Ino clearly flushed at the sudden attention. The two Uzumaki noticed their fellows were all smirking, catching on to the grand scheme their commander had cooked up. Naruto stretching out and yawning, much to the hidden amusement of his cousin with him, guess we should get to the inn. Rest up. Someone seems eager. Karen grins causing Naruto to glare, what? She blinks innocently, not fooling anyone as be growled, do not start with me, Karen he slips into the old Uzumaki tongue, confusing everyone as none were aware that the Uzumaki had their own language, don't be so hesitant, Narukoi. Remember our talk on the bridge? The talk on ship. Naruto. Spoke Ino approaching the duo, gaining them both Uzumaki clan members' attention, what is it? Naruto snipped clearly annoyed, what was that language you were speaking? I didn't understand a word of it. Are you going to tell? Karen questioned the blonde's attention, don't worry about it. Naruto waving her off, the redhead blowing him a raspberry earning a glare from the blonde, let's get to the inn. I want an app and food hope they have Raymond. Earning chuckles from the group as he moves off. The others follow suit, but Ino looks on with narrowed eyes, as the thought of a clan language wasn't unheard of it was surprising as the leaf has no knowledge of such information in regards to the clan. Filing it away for later, she followed after the leaving group. Land of water, hidden mist village. The following day Naruto yawns as he reaches the gate, his team already there morning all stretching as he stumbles before them, morning sleepyhead. May chuckles as Karen attacks his bedhead, trying to clean it up to no avail, well, thankfully these negotiations have wrapped up rather quickly. Indeed. May shaking his hand, this was most expedient for an agreement. We aim to please Karen jokes, causing the White Dawn members to look blank-faced at her, she was not ashamed, anyway pulling his glare from his proud cousin will bring the shinobi passports the week before their training. Naruto informs the woman in charge of the Hidden Mist Village to nod, I'll be sure to make sure the samurai conscripts are here on time. No refunds after the ink has dried. Karen states with a smug grin earning chuckles of her own, May sweat drops whilst thinking about how expensive this was going to be. The team left with smiles and waves over their shoulders, disappearing into the mist. Ino watched Karen and Naruto talking quietly in a language she didn't recognize. The same one they used earlier. As naturally curious as she was intrigued by it, but not only to discover what they were speaking, but also to be able to communicate with them without unintended ears listening in. That was a problem for later as she fell into companionable chatter among the group, seamlessly melding into the group as she unknowingly began to subconsciously and morally align with them. She was completely unaware of the two smirking Yuzumaki, smirking knowingly at one another. Land of water, South Sea. The open sea again, huh? Ino appearing beside Naruto who himself was leaning back against the rail that seemed to be his spot, regardless of which ship they were on, his golden locks flowing in the wind. Yeah we travel a lot Naruto shrugged with a large smile though, the sea is always a common favorite. Ino didn't realize how much she was blushing at the sight of the long-haired blonde well-built man who was a leading head of the group mercenaries. Naruto noticed her distant gaze and chuckled to himself, over her shoulder he noticed the hand signal performed by the others, laughing at the lack of awareness of the former Leaf Nin, and how predictive she was being. Karen especially had a wicked smile on her face, it was going exactly as she planned. Man, she was so good at this seduction game it was ridiculous. The dark chuckle slipped through her lips, it was reminiscent of her former bosses, and many people stepped away from her. She was incredibly prideful of this plan she came up with. Chuckle turning to a deep cackle beneath her breath. 
At night the ship was jolted, that awoke the snoozing Yuzumaki aboard as a sunken feeling fills their guts, and the crew rushed to action. By the time Eno had made it up topside, White Dawn members helping reeling in the sails and gale force winds. The hurricane came in suddenly and swiftly, the ship was fighting against a storm, yet none feared the rising tide. Yet as Eno struggled to stay afoot, she knew something was wrong when she noticed Karen yelling at Naruto in that strange language again. He yelled at another Yuzumaki, if their red hair was to go by, who nodded and yelled back while jumping up and down, while tying down the white sail. But just as she feared, a massive beast erupted from the massive swells that surrounded the vessel. Naruto yelled again before being replaced by another sailor, and rushing towards the edge going through hand signs along with Karen and another lightning style, thunder rain. Karen called, wind style, gale shot. Naruto called Yuzumaki style, maelstrom. Another Yuzumaki yelled, and the combined jutsu blasted the beast, but unfortunately, it only forced it back. A mighty roar shook the wooden vessel, panic settling in among the crew, but as Naruto was, Naruto does and managed to calm everyone down, by borrowing his old sensei's words, do not worry. I will never allow my friends to die. With his goofy smile. Karen notices his tensing muscles and knew he was about to do something characteristically stupid. Before she could voice her objection, he blasted off the deck, spiraling sphere of water and lightning in hand, meeting the Leviathan's high-speed blast jet of water directly. Yuzumaki style, Yuzu Rasengan. The two attacks collide, but to everyone's surprise, the water jet was blasted apart in six streams narrowly missing the ship, with some aboard ducking out of instinct. The ball of chakra continued on forward, pushing the parting streams further away from the ship, while its owner followed it in with a battle cry full of confidence in his strength to protect. Boom. Banked back by a chakra chain, Naruto was pulled through the smoke that stuck to him, a smirk upon his face as the beast fell backwards. Smoking bellowed from its mouth as it fell back to the ocean. Landing on the edge of the ship, victory fingers up and that stupid smile upon his face. Perrin rolled her eyes at that but with a smile, she and the others turn away just as a tentacle wrapped around his ankle, yelp was heard, and before they knew anything, Naruto was gone. Splash. Everyone ran to the edge, but there was nothing. Karen could only watch as Naruto's signature continued to get further and further away Naruto. Unknown location. Hey. Down there. A man. We should. Come. S. Rasama will know. Are you sure? Naruto awakes in a tent, yep definitely a tent, light tan leather roof and a soft bed beneath him. A glance around showed that the floor was cloth flooring, but noticed sand here and there. Sitting up, he looks around more intensely and noticed the low wooden drawers on the right, a tall cabinet on his left, that allowed the man to notice the glint of steel within. Looking down at himself, his clothes had been removed, his shirt was absent, but his boxers remained. Glancing around he noticed signs of used medical stuffs, which reminds him of the last moments of consciousness he had, fighting off that leviathan with a Adamari Sengen, tends to fix most his problems he muses. A few minutes after retrieving the clothes he found in the low drawers, suspiciously his size, he insects these new threads in the full-length mirror beside the bed. A white t-shirt bearing a somewhat familiar sigil, though he can't recall where it why it felt so, beneath a sandy white loose overcoat that matched the cream weapons pouch, cargo trousers, and sandals. The kunai were ceramic white, along with his fingerless plated gloves, that took held the sigil on the back of the hands. Medical tape secured any loose clothing. All in all he felt ready for what he presumed was a desert climate. You look well. A voice startling him, spinning round with kunai in hand to see a woman before him that had long red hair with spiky bangs on her forehead, wise and red eyes, and skin that was surprisingly fair, though a few stress marks could be seen. What threw Naruto through a loop, however, was that her smile seemed to stir something within him, unaware that a certain chakra construct had noticed this and smirked. A brief pulse of its hyper-dense chakra through the boy's system, concentrating in his brain broke something and a torrential of memories, swiftly assaulted his mind, as if one of his clones just popped. It's been so long her smile widened upon seeing the recollection play across his eyes, hasn't it Naruto? Those last words were lost on the man as he pulled her into a firm hug, one she had dearly missed, and the chest that helped forge her into the leader she was today, S. Ra. Chapter 5. Wilderness of Home. Sitting upon the lone bed within the spacious tent, Naruto and S. Ra confront one another for the first time in what felt like a lifetime. She was beaming a megawatt smile, reminiscent of his own, that warmed the lone Yuzumaki clan man's heart, so, you survived all this time, huh? Sorry I never her finger finds his lips and she shakes her head, the leaf shinobi told us, right. It was best forgotten about. She explained with a fading smile, though, to me at least, I do recall you and your efforts. Hand falling back to her lap, though it was more a dream than anything. I see. Naruto spoke still Samar, which didn't go unnoticed by the former queen, thankfully however gaining his attention, whatever he had done to my memories didn't last too long, 
but I also came to an understanding of the whole situation. This caused a raised eyebrow from the blonde, somehow you traveled back to help us. Due to that, I knew we would meet again sometime, and with that knowledge, she pulls out a sand height that causes his eyes to widen, my burrowed headband. She nodded, we decided to follow your example, and even after the fall of Rimran, we did not lose hope. Her smile widened in fact she turned to the door come in darling. And a girl that bears a striking resemblance to her mother, but her hair is lighter in color. She wears an orange robe with a navy blue outline, violet eyes, and a tan and green bandana around her forehead. Stepping in Naruto notices she was clutching a Suna issue saber that causes him to smile wide. The girl bows formally hello, my name is Simru. Simru is my daughter and current leader of our roaming caravan, and the one who found you washed up on the shore. S. Ra turns back to Naruto, a sly smile upon her face and our daughter. Land of Wind, Rumran Caravan Camp. That night a feast was held. The Rumran survivors celebrated the return of their hero, who traveled space and time to save them from their fates worse than death. Over the hours after his awakening, Naruto, S. Ra and Simru spent time together, reconnecting as only a family could. Naruto told of the exploits he's been on since their parting, skillfully avoiding mentioning his family and organization. Both ladies suspected he was hiding something, but dared not think too hard about it. Today was a day of celebration, and they did not want to ruin it, though both would vow independently to address it later. The 300 people were a sight for the battle-weary man who was slowly coming to terms with the fact that one of his kids was older than he, but that was discarded quickly when noticing a group of boys clearly trying to impress her. His parental mode activated in vengeance and promptly scared said boys off his little girl who was far too young to think about boys. This both warmed and frustrated Simru, glad to have finally met her father, but frustrated that he was remaining so close to her and she couldn't enjoy any saker hanging with her friends. Not under his watch. Esra, on the other hand, was elated that he had accepted his role without question, as was a natural at teasing their daughter and keeping her in check. The night would end with Naruto and Esra cuddled up in her tent, the latter resting on that perfect chest she had missed for so long. Naruto was in turmoil, however, how the hell was he meant to explain this? Time travel. Really? He doubted this would fly when he got back home. Kin was going to kill him. In a city, dominated by grey skyscrapers and rain clouds, a certain brunette suddenly found herself randomly chuckling somewhat darkly as her husband's face came to mind. Her kids shivering in their beds whilst praying for their father's safety. The shudder up Naruto's spine confirmed his fears, noting to pick up some moon flowers and Land of Fang's legendary chocolates before heading home. With a mental nod to himself, professionally ignoring the snort from deep within, he falls into a dreamless sleep in confidence that he would survive another day. The next day, after breakfast S. Ra and her daughter confronted Naruto with what they suspect was bad news. Gathering in the lead tent, they find him writing out a report and a brief glance from S. Ra, she noted that it was a retelling of their previous encounter in great detail. The names Minato Namikas, Tei Uzumaki and Laren popped up, and their visages briefly returned to mind. Finishing, Naruto went through hand signs, and it duplicated before he rolled it up in two scrolls. One had the hergless figure of Sun Agakur, the other a white cloud which he then hands to, what she had only just noticed, were two small sandy colored foxes with black paws and tail tips, you know your orders. Naruto explained handing each one to which they both yipped before proofing away. Sighing, Naruto turned to the duo and offered a look knowing half smile, I guess we should have that talk, huh? Both ladies nod as they take a seat on the bed, the blonde turning the chair backward as he sat facing them. Hand running through his thick golden hair, a sigh escaping his lips, well, as you know, I was banished from Kanahagakur no Sato for being a threat to village safety. Their friend said it was a stupid decision though. S. Ra responded to which he nodded, first of all, I should explain that I am, what is commonly referred to as, a Jinchurki. A human sacrifice. The two nodded, I have a tailed beast, a being a pure chakra, sealed within me, and, at the time, there was a group of missing ninjas who were seeking my kind out. It can't be that Simru began only for Naruto to raise his hand, let me explain first, and then you can ask questions, before things get complicated. She nods and he continues we, as in containers of these beasts, are typically a hidden village's trump card. Used in wars to great effect. Our entire purpose is to keep each other in line, using the power our beasts provide, as no normal shinobi can stand up against us. Naruto sighs hard, wariness flooding his features unfortunately, the other side of this is much worse. Our own people hate us for that same power, and typically the masses confuse us for the beast we contain, and are more often than not, hated for it. The smile he offered was hollow at best, heartbreaking at worse, I was no better. He looks directly at Esra now I happen to hold the greatest of them all, the one feared by all the others, and the most powerful of the nine. The Kyubi no Yoko. The nine-tailed fox. 
He noticed them both gulp, but he smiled softly, with that in mind we moved on to why I was banished. My village's citizens' hatred towards me, the threat of 10s rank criminals coming to get me and a failed mission, was all that was needed to cast me out. But it wasn't your fault. S. Ra argued to which Naruto nodded, I was a baby when he was sealed within me. I had no choice on the matter. No say in my future, I was burdened with its presence, and yet they chose to ignore that fact either way. That's horrible. Samaru adds gaining a smile and a nod from her father, it is. But it's not all bad. He continued, I have friends now, I help build a group of like-minded people who help save those that need saving. Reform criminals and give them a new purpose in life. His smile became blinding, we have made peace wherever we go. Sometimes a brick at a time but peace nonetheless. Oh? S. Ra clinging on to this first piece of good news, her paramour clearly proud in himself yeah. We have acted as mediators for negotiations. Peacekeeping forces in many of the minor nations. Ended a civil war in water country, that was our biggest work to date, second to destroying that group of missing ninja. His face hardened at the thought of Akatsuki, they were a threat to the whole world. So, what's it called? Samaru questioned, clearly peeking up at the thought of a peacekeeping forces of this magnitude. Naruto smirks at this, pride oozing from his being white dawn. Land of wind. Sun Agakur. Ara was combating his fiercest foe since his brother in arms, with a similar ability to replicate, and quite possibly the bane of his existence. Paperwork. A soft growl emanating from his throat halted when a puff of smoke erupted from his desk, and there stood a desert fox that he didn't recognize, yet he only knew of one fox summoner that this one must be serving. Taking the scroll, Gara pulls out some beef jerky and hands it off to the kit that hips before poofing away in smoke cloud. T lies flow with practiced ease, a report for a mission dated many years ago which confused him. The date specified was back when Naruto and his friends were serving as Suna Shinobi on a temporary basis to bolster their forces, and this mission was hunting down a rogue puppeteer. Ara blinks. Once. Twice. Confused about why Naruto was resubmitting the report again. Mitsuri. Bring me the mission file from Yukade's subjection. The Kazakiage calls over his intercom. An hour later and Gara was dumbfounded at what was written by his first friend. The new report covered everything the original did, but went into more detail about various fights, as well as the inclusion of a second team. A leaf team no less. A team with the fourth Hokage, before he became Cage. He sighs again. This is yet another headache courtesy of one Naruto Uzumaki, when I see you again, Naruto, I will crush you with my sand. Land of Wind, Rumran Caravan Camp. Naruto was suddenly hit with a wave of nervousness, pulling down his shirt in attempt to cool it off what's wrong. S. Ra asks worriedly, offering a cup of cool water to him that he takes Dunno, though I suspect that I should stay away from Suna for a while. A nervous chuckle followed as the two ladies sweat drop at his antics. A polite cough drew all eyes to Simru, her violet eyes boring into Naruto's baby bluish violet Tusan. There's still something you aren't tell us. Isn't there? Naruto's smile fades, head falling against his hands atop the chair's backrest while breathing out slowly and deliberately. The long moment passes before he speaks softly, I married Simru gasped, hand over her mouth, but S. Ra remained compassed, and have two kids. Naruto swore he heard Simru's heart shatter at that. He blinked at that. There was no outrage. No footsteps to leave. No sobbing. No sobbing. Hesitantly and very slowly, Naruto lifts his head to see both ladies calmly watching him, but he was not fooled. As he looked deep into those ruby gems he could see it. The broken heart hidden behind the strong front. Without breaking eye contact he spoke to his daughter, Simru. I need to speak with your mother in private. No buts. Cutting her off this is important grown-up stuff. You're too young to know of yet. Simru, not wanting to upset her newly found father, stood from the bed and walked towards the door, but as she glanced back. She noticed the intense gaze of her parents and could sense something was up. With a sigh, she left and securely closed the flaps. In a flash of hand signs, a privacy and security barrier secured the large tent, with a deep breath Naruto looks directly at Esra, and his gaze softens, no one can hear us spoken so gently, babies would be jealous, you can cry now. And just like that, tears ran like rivers down her face. In that same moment, the man took her into his strong embrace and didn't say a word. He just let her take any and all comfort she could from him. It would be a long hour. Somewhere in the land of rivers. Dusty was excited, this was his first mission given to him by the summoner, and it was a simple delivery mission. Hoping over a rock, beneath a fallen log, through a bush and he stood before a small river. Taking a quick drink, he was seemingly unaware of the danger encroaching upon him, but thanks to being the runt of his litter, meaning he was pranked consistently by his siblings, his reaction speed was beyond reproach. Within the space of a twitch, Dusty had flipped clear of a viper strike and landed on a narrow tree trunk. A leap forward and the head was separated from the slinking body. 
A second, a bush snake, tried its luck only for it to the loose its head too. Cautiously Dusty scanning the underbrush and caught a whiff of a human, but this time was too late to react as two blood-red eyes spinning wildly and then black. Land of wind, Rumran caravan camp. Simru re-entered the tent to find her parents resting their foreheads against one another, but noticed a small trail of saliva between which told her what had happened you. Mom. Dad. Ahem. Simru sits down and decides to listen to what her parents have decided. It must have been a tough talk based on the still thick air however the fact they kissed suggested a consensus had been reached, it's been decided. Spoke Naruto as s Ra nodded with a small smile, although things on my side need tending to first, we shall head to Suna for now where the caravan will wait for a response. I shall go on ahead and discuss terms with my organization. Then what? Simru questioned hesitantly, either you stay put there, or you can come see your dad's new home, and you could even join us in our humanitarian efforts. Naruto explained calmly to which she smiled and nodded. Her smile was short-lived as she recalled the other thing, um what about? I will handle it. Naruto staring dead in her eyes firmly holding her gaze. She found herself smiling alongside her mother, who had a tint pink upon her cheeks. A week later. Land of wind, Sungakir gate. Ara stands at the forefront of the group of Suna Shinobi, his siblings at his sides, as they watch the nomadic caravan approach with trepidation. It was common knowledge with the Land of Wind residents that the Rimran did not trust the hidden village at it had abandoned them during the Second Shinobi War, leaving them to their destruction. Yet here they were, willingly coming to seek aid by the military powerhouse that guards their homeland. The group arrived and two occupants from the caravan, that sunny blonde was easy to distinguish as Naruto, one of them with the other red head that Gara assumed was s Ra, the last queen. Stepping clear of his forces, siblings at his side, the Kazakiage approaches the group handout which was promptly grasped glad to see you still alive. I heard you had and he paused, and Naruto sweat dropped knowing full well his friend was about to make a terrible joke, interesting boat ride. Gara stated causing Naruto to deadpan, is that the best you could do? Yes. I swear, Gara, Shukaku must have taken your sense of humor. Naruto responded as the others chuckle at the light heart nature of the exchange, as the two bicker like the brothers they claim to be. The hem s Ra clears her throat which stiffens Naruto's spine, his joking subsided immediately at the sound, as his eyes harden much like his former sand counterpart right, to be blunt I plan on bringing the roaring people into the framework of the dawn. Seeing Gara nod, Naruto continued, for now, however, I wish to have them reside here until I finish up on my end. I see no issues with it. The fifth Kazakiage reports after a brief thought, they can use the area set aside for your group. Ah yes. That'll work for the short term. Naruto nodded rubbing his chin speak of Tamari, stepping into the conversation with a soft glare at her fellow blonde, when are you guys actually going to start construction, huh? Little bit of killing intent behind every word. Naruto's hand shot up placatingly, not my domain. I'm shinobi affairs, not logistical distribution. This is a shinobi village, no. She growled staring menacingly, then you should. Fine. Naruto shouted hands waving up, I'll look into it when I get back to the office. With a huff, hands on his hips, it's not like I have mountains of paperwork for Mizu no Kunai, or anything. They all chuckle as they are led towards the gate, Tamari smirking the whole way whilst Naruto was clearly distraught at the thought of his workload. Reaching the gate Naruto froze upon seeing those very familiar midnight black hair, matching eyes, and perfect build, at least in Naruto's humble opinion, and it was running toward him. On reflex, he caught her as she jumped into his arms narrow. Kin. His equally softly, as they hug is intimate and firm, yet it was clear as day at how much love they had for each other. Pangs of pain and guilt emanating from the two Rimran queen and princess, that was not missed by the blonde who didn't allow it to show outwardly. The affection was turned up to 24, out of 10, and their lip lock was just as passionate. Flush cheeks all round at that. Land of wind, Kazakiage office. Slap. It echoed. Naruto didn't block her. He knew this was not the depth of her rage, but just the tip of his punishment. Looking back at his gentle wife's face, filled with tears, anger, and fear. Without words he drew her into a hug that she fraught against every centimeter against it, but upon reaching his perfectly chiseled chest, at least in her clearly unbiased opinion, her fight ceased. Tak sobs were muffled by his cloak and clothes. Imran's watched this from the side, the Suna contingent from the desk, and the other white dawn operatives opposite the Imran's ahem. All eyes turning to the Kazakiage can we get to business, or... Trailing off at the end as Naruto switches gear to his commander mode, that all knew all too well, beside s Ra of course. So, what does the land of wind require of us for this help? Naruto asked as he sat before the cage as the officer of the White Dawn, besides our current agreements. Gara tapping his finger rhythmically upon his desk 5. 2. 
Naruto cutting him off, causing his old friend to pause with the stares between the two brothers of circumstance, before the redeed nodded very well, everything else is fine. Bud. Naruto nodded then, can we get a priority on our headquarters? Five then. Gara pushes, but Naruto's blank stony face, that didn't fit him yet forced the other side to concede. Fine. We'll get to work tomorrow. The redhead then looks to Esra, if that's okay with you. With a silent nod he continues whilst looking back to his brother, I assume you will be returning to your main headquarters. My leave was Naruto thought for a second, but his wife took up the end unsanctioned, causing a twitch from Gara's lip right, unsanctioned Naruto too barely suppressed smirk, before continuing so, I still need to return and file my paperwork, he sighed hard before shuddering and, then deal with the stacks that no doubt has grown. It has. Kin confirms with a cherisher cat grin, earning a chuckle from those who weren't her husband, whom it had the opposite effect. Thus, we will stay a night before heading out. Pushing himself up from the chair at hand, his wife matching him exactly, we have left your room untouched. Tamari mentioned and Naruto nodded, thanks Mary. I'll cook dinner tonight. This earned several peaked interested, what time? Asked Akazakiage, who was focused intently on this about 8. Naruto mumbled to himself before nodding, let's say 8, but as late as 9. Dessert. Tamari probed to which Naruto smirked, that foxy smirk that she would never admit to being panty dropping with his adult features, depends on what you guys have in the pantry. He shrugged as he took up Kin's hand we'll see. To which they were dismissed. As soon as Naruto, Kin, Esra, and Simru had left, Gara turned to his sister who nodded, take a full squad if you must, ensure the pantry is fully stocked before he returns there. Yes, Kazuki Ajizama. She vanishes in a vortex of wind immediately as he turns back to the door, looking out over the village. Land of Wind, Sun Agakur. After a bountiful dinner a very tense conversation took place between Naruto and Kin on one side, Esra, and Simru on the other. Within his now soundproofed, enclosed and sealed room was Naruto who had just explained everything to Kin. About the mission given to him, Teaya and Larn to hunt down a low S-ranked missing shinobi Muke during their early days of the mercenary group shinobi department. Naturally Kin was familiar with that report, it wasn't really a surprise as at the time they were in the dancing around one another phase. During that time, Rin had known that Teaya and Karen both had their own designs for Naruto. She knew why Karen at least wanted to revive their shared clan, though she also suspected a deeper reason of her pursuit. Teaya on the other hand was confusing, even for her as her best friend, so every interaction they had on paper, Kin would go through it with a fine toothpick. This situation however is unprecedented. Kin knew it. She knew her idiot husband always found himself in improbable situations, doing the impossible, and coming out on top while grinning stupidly all the way time travel though. She exhales slowly before looking directly at Esra then Simru, I understand that this was not planned, nor done with any malice, so I have no right to complain or demand things of either you. Taking a deep breath, however, as I am Naruto's wife and mother to his three children. I can't just allow you to come into the family without setting down some ground rules. I understand. Esra states, nodding along to that however, I assume you still love him, to which the Rembrandt's former queen nodded to Kin continued thus we have to come to some sort of agreement no. Another nod shared between the two. The ravenette then turned to the child of the situation, Simru, is it? The woman in question nodded, I have no issues with you pursuing a relationship with my husband, you are his child, and as such my own stepdaughter. This earned a smile from the woman who nodded, though, I expect you to babysit your younger siblings though. Kin's smile was not warm, nor cold it was just enforcing. Simru nodded hesitant at first, but suddenly the realization, she had siblings, younger siblings, that she still had responsibilities. Though this time, she was happy for it yes, I can handle that. The next morning, Naruto, Kin, Esra and Simru were moving towards the borders between the land of wind and land of rain. It was a now commonly used transit route as rain has become somewhat of a trade center, a neutral one at that, that allowed all to conduct business equally regardless of your homeland. Despite the negative relations, both land of earth and land of lightning have trade caravans that also utilize the central hub. As the new family moved on, they were laughing with soft banter and joke around as they come to understand one another. Kin was working overtime to understand and support Esra, and coming to know Simru as a friend, and perhaps sister figure if not step-parent. The joyous mood did not last as Naruto was the first to sense the malice-filled approach, Neru. In question before sensing a rapidly approaching individual, her own eyes narrowing him. Again. So, it would seem. Naruto confirmed as his own temper began to flare, we may need to, he threw out his arms out wide, a massive blanket of wind expanded around the group, deflecting the lightning blast that impacted immediately after it stabilized. The sand cloud was immediately blasted away as Naruto's old nemesis arrived, Sasuke Chia. What do you want? 
Naruto spoke so coldly, even in the middle of this countrywide desert, it felt like it dropped a few degrees. Fight me dope. Sasuke states, pulling out his sword casually, with his infamous smirk no. Was Naruto's swift response. You think you have a choice. Sasuke channeling his lightning through his Shikoda and activating his Sharingan. On 100 likes, part 2 will be uploaded. For now you guys can watch this video.